All right, what is up, everybody? Welcome back. Got another Thursday night live stream. This time, 9 p.m. Eastern, a little later than usual, but it's a work week, a little crazy week, uh, crazy day today. We're kind of running around doing stuff. But I managed to pick up a few new bottles today, some stuff for the live stream that I was not expecting actually to taste tonight. There are some heavy hitters on the table, as you can see, hiding out back here. We'll kind of run it down here at the beginning. I'll let you know what we are uh, going to be sipping on this evening. I got to get something in my glass. I've had zero whiskey so far today. So, of course, I'm going to kick it off with a little Eagle Rare store pick tonight. Chained Rock Liquors 2021. So let me know what you're sipping on this evening. I'm going to say hello to everybody in the chat. Hit that like button on your way in. And we're getting close to 7,500 subscribers, which is great. I think we are like maybe 75 subscribers away from 7,500. So if you have not subscribed, if you're watching this live, if you're watching the replay, hit that uh, hit that subscribe button as well if you want to you know catch some more videos. We'll talk uh, along the way here. We're gonna we're gonna probably do around two hours tonight, I would imagine. Um, probably get into a mystery sample or two as well. And I know the channel's been a little slow. Had a stomach bug last week. Sarah had one. Uh, Sarah caught it from me, whatever it was, there for a second, and things were just kind of knocked out of out of uh, order. So unfortunately, I didn't get the Irish whiskey video out that I was that Jesse so uh, incredibly generously drove out. We we met up, we exchanged samples, and that day I was feeling okay, and then that night it, that was a wrap. Like still, things were not sitting well with me. And uh, so things are kind of out of order. So I, I don't know exactly what, what next video is going to come out. It's probably going to be this Irish whiskey tasting. And then Rare Breed Review, which I still owe you guys, Port Charlotte 10, and um, and then getting into some other things. So anyways, cheers, y'all. Let me know what you're sipping on this evening. If you've had uh, any luck picking things up recently, I know in Ohio, we're seeing Old Forester 1924 drop all over the place at SRP 115, which is nice. No markup in the state. Uh, so I, I, I managed to pick one up for uh, for a friend earlier today. So cheers, guys! Let's have a, let's have a fun night. <laughs> Joe <laughs> says Cam has a 2009 Kia's worth of bourbon on the table tonight. Um, that might unfortunately be kind of close. <laughs> uh, I don't know the going rate, but um. The two Heaven Hills back here, unfortunately, lot, you know, yeah, whatever. We don't need to talk dollars and cents, at least not yet, not this early in the night. So anyways, good to see you guys. Travis, uh, yes, hit that like button. We got to get to 10K. I think we'll get to 10K subs. Um, I think we'll do that in May. That's, that's my prediction would be May. All right, we see. I see Josh in here. I see Bourbon Retriever, Copper Wolf, Mike Conklin. Cheers to all of you. Damn thrice. Christine. Uh, Vasco, Alec, we see Brian, Guy, Joe, Jeff, uh, Yimosan. Is that how you say it? Yimosan? It's a, it's a new name, it looks like. Mr. Zitro, Jesse, of course. Be Willie, Bourbon Hunter. All right, guys. So let's get a few more folks in here. Again, we are going to tonight, we are going to be reviewing Heaven Hill 18. All right, so the brand new expression in the Heritage Collection from Heaven Hill. We've got this tonight. We've got Heaven Hill 17 as a point of comparison. Uh, as you saw in the thumbnail, the the not brand new, but the new release here of the Bullet 12-Year Rye. We're going to get into that and the Bernheim A224 batch barrel-proof wheat whiskey. Again, I, I found the Bullet today. I found the Bernheim barrel-proof today uh, after work, and I was surprised to just walk in and see those, um, you know, sitting on the on the allocation table at the, at the local spot, which was great. So that's what we're going to be doing. Uh, let's talk giveaway very quickly before we get into it. It's going to work the same way as usual. Every $5 Super Chat is one entry into the giveaway. Tonight's going to be a sample pack. That sample pack is going to be insane, all right? And this is the last giveaway we're doing for the month of March. It's going to be a couple weeks till we do another one. So Heaven Hill 18 is going to be in the giveaway sample pack. Heaven Hill 17 is going to be in there. The Bernheim was going to be in there too. I have the old and the new version of Bullet 12 Year Rye. Those will both be in the giveaways. These ECBPs and Larcenies, these are not included. This is just stuff if we need points of reference tonight for the Heaven Hill 18. But we're going to spice up tonight's giveaway because it's the last one for a little while. 
So I know many, many thoughts and opinions, myself included on this, but a lot of people want to taste this before they hunt it on secondary. So the 15th anniversary bottle, sample in the giveaway. 1989 Granddad 114. We popped this last night with some friends, uh, some some friends from work, percussion and timpani friends. We had a great night last night sharing some whiskey, and we popped this 89 open. So that's going to be in the giveaway as well. Michter's 10 A barrel, 2023, a very low numbered barrel, Old Forester employee bottle, and the River Roots port finish. So it's a ridiculous sample pack, 10 one ounce samples, and we're going to have multiple winners. We're going to have two winners on that. So there you go. You know the deal. Every $5 is an entry. I'll track giveaway entries tonight. Um, you can always send direct Venmo, PayPal. That information is in the description of the video, or you can super chat here on YouTube. Either way, totally cool with me. <clears throat> and let me get that banner going now. There we go. All right. So what we're going to start with tonight, we're going to start with a review of the new Bullet 12-Year Rye. And I feel like I've seen some folks uh, posting reviews of this, I don't know, in the last week or so, maybe maybe even further back than that. I don't know exactly when this new batch dropped, but it's been like five years since they did a release of this stuff, which, again, the old bottle looked like this with this brighter label, similar label to the Bullet 10-Year Bourbon, which I don't think we've seen that in a while either. Both of these coming in at 92 proof or 46% ABV, and... Um, and I'm excited because this is a value buy. This is a $50 bottle, and it is 12-year MGP rye whiskey. I know it's 92 proof, but this is not necessarily for the aficionado type, you know, enthusiast crowd necessarily. I think this is meant to be approachable by everybody. And so at that price point, you can't beat it. I mean, just on paper, having not even tasted it yet, it's already a great value buy. So with that said, let's get into it now. And let me know if you've tried this one tonight. We're starting with some Glen Cairns because I'm kind of short on glasses. I didn't do the dishes last night. <laughs> yeah, hit that like button, people, says Devin. Thank you, Devin. All right, Jacob, I got you in for two. Cheers, man. Thanks for uh, popping in there. Uh, excuse me, got you in for four. Tom says, Heaven Hill 18, say no more. We're going to talk about it. My patrons have already seen me taste it, and it's going to be interesting tonight. Um, I have some ideas about what I think of it, but it's also been changing every time I've gone back and tasted it. So that's kind of, for me, what makes this more interesting to taste it uh, tonight with this comparison to Heaven Hill 17. Devin's got some Heaven Hill 17 in the glass. Very cool. Uh, Lynn says, wow, invisible. I don't know what that means, Lynn, but good to see you, man. Just kind of scrolling by. Let's see, Tom, you found Bullet 12, some good old MGP juice. Oh, and it smells good. We're getting into it now. I found two of those on a shelf two years ago for 55 so it must have been the old stuff, right? Better after three months of air. Interesting. Uh, sipping on some Glens Creek OCD5. Very curious about that. Uh, no 1924 in Augusta yet. Yeah, it seems like it's still kind of trickling out into different markets. All right. Huh. Cool. So let's let's review the newest release and then we'll go back and compare it to the old one. To me, this has a lot of even though this is a rye whiskey, 955 MGP, you would expect dill, herbal, spearmint, pine. You're gonna expect these kind of notes. But at this low of, of a proof, when you put this much water in an MGP rye, it really tends to sweeten up, I think. Like at this proof, I often will get more honey notes, more kind of light. Uh, brighter caramel type notes this actually has some toastiness so even though there's a lot of water added to this it, it, it's actually coming off deep and rich and and it's not jumping out of the glass with a ton of those like real dilly minty spice notes yeah to me this is kind of like um a little bit like carrot cake you know carrot cake notes um there's there's kind of like this toasty bread thing ginger for sure and on low proof mgp rise i think ginger is going to be a big hallmark and there is a menthol element to this so the rye for me is coming off more menthol but it's not really overt it's not in your face smacking you with herbal rye spice 
very good. I mean, the nose of that at 92 proof, it smells over 92 proof for me. Like if I go back to the, the Eagle Rare that I poured at first, the bullet is, is nosing like 100, 102 proof whiskey. It really, it's got a lot of presence to it. I know it's a fresh crack. I've I got some air in this bottle before the stream. Now, as I go on the nose to the previous edition, much lighter. I wonder if there's a color difference because it, it smells like there would be a color difference, if you know what I mean. Eh, they're pretty much the same, but this this is kind of like um, the comparison I did of, of the new Weller 12, the 2023 edition versus the 19. The 2023 just had a darker color and it was a way richer profile. Kind of threw me for a loop being a mainstay product. Of course, you can get batch drift over years like that. But the old one is great. It's light. It's light honey. Kind of light fruit notes. A little bit of like, um, a little bit of like an Asian pear note. This is big. So <laughs> since since I had that stomach bug last week, Sarah made like fresh, you know, ginger. Uh, what was it? Ginger orange tea with like turmeric in there. Turmeric, turmeric. It's got an R. Do people say the R in that word? Anyways, the orange ginger tea, that's what the old Bullet 12 smells like, whereas the new one is way richer. It's like, I'm almost getting like a chocolate, like a little s'mores note on this. I mean, th there's a lot going on in this new Bullet 12, so let's get a sip of it now. <clears throat> Cheers, guys. Oh my God, that is delicious. Okay. In 2024, this may be the best value bottle that has been released. $50, $55 here in Ohio, but online you can look it up. 50 bucks for this thing. Distribution is humongous on this bottle. If you if you check the state website here in Ohio and you look at who has this, it's every single store is lit up red with full inventory of this bullet 12 uh you, go buy one <laughs> if you're if you're a rye drinker of course go buy one if you're a bourbon drinker I, I i we we tend to say this a lot it's a bourbon drinker's rye at at the end of the day if you really just hate rye you might hate this but i think this is friendly to a lot of different kind of palates Sheesh. Uh, Jesse, Cam, any thoughts on Bullet 12 compares to uh, other similarly priced rye like Pikes? Well, yeah, proof is going to be tough on that. I mean, the Russell's, that Russell's six-year, I think that's a 90 proofer. I don't think I have it in the room, though. I think it's downstairs. Um, I don't necessarily want to run down, but maybe I'll maybe I'll taste that like in the Patreon or something and, and talk about that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's... Like you can tell it's an MGP rye. It's not it's not pulling any punches. It's not coming off like it's from somewhere else. But it has enough of this like toasty, again, kind of like carrot cake, just richness to it to make to, to have a, enough of like a Kentucky type type thing in there too to appeal to um ride, you know, other types of rye drinkers. Man, that is great. Matt says, told you it smells fantastic. Did you tell me that, Matt? I've been terrible at communication recently, just kind of across the board. But, my God, that stuff is good. All right, we're going we're gonna to take another sip here. And then I, I have a bunch of super chats that came in on Venmo, so thank you guys. We'll get to those in a sec. Mike Conklin, sipping on Barrel King 77 MP. Cheers, Matt. Um, oh, yeah, that's Matt's bottle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got mine down there. Um, I think I've got Matt's new blend. I think Matt's new blend is going to arrive soon, uh, and I'm super excited to taste that. I saw the – if you guys saw Matt's story on Instagram, they were they were using, like, Elijah Craig 23 barrels or something, something absurd, and the, the blend uh, process was on there. I can't wait to taste it. I cannot wait. Tom Harper says the older uh, Bullet 12 smells overproof as well. 
for me, it's it doesn't, but mine's been open for probably about a year, this bottle. Maybe even a year and a half. And I always felt that it was good. It is. It's super solid. But the the newer uh the newer edition is <laughs> just great. Very woody on the new bullet twelve, but not not in uh well, it's like balanced, right? It's not super young oak. But at twelve years old, you might expect there to be like some some heavy oak influence, like heavy funky um earthy oak. That's not there either. I think it's a very balanced oak profile on the on the bullet twelve. All right. Finish on the bullet twelve. It does get a little savory. This it's like peppery. It would be uh, it'd be tough for me to figure out what that note is that's kind of lingering on the palate. Something a little bit not soapy. You know, some MGP rise, you can get that little soapiness to them. Just a, just a, oh, it's, it's like, um, it's like hops. It's like, it's got this hoppy bite on the finish of the Bullet 12. That's what it is. Just a tinge of that IPA kind of hoppiness that, that's, it's crisp, a little bitter, um, but not unpleasant by any means. All right. So, gigantic recommend. I can't recommend that enough. Uh, friendly as can be, and at 50 to 55 bucks, <laughs> that's going to get, I think that's going to get a lot of uh, lay, lay people, you know, non whiskey enthusiasts. That could be a gateway into the, the, the wider world of whiskey enthusiasm. Okay. So that's going to do it. Bullet 12. <clears throat> that's great. That is great stuff. By the way, if anybody has sent samples, um, I have a table full of samples over here. Some of them are still not even unwrapped because it's just been uh, kind of chaotic. If anybody has any samples they've sent that they think would, would work well in the night that you would want to plug in, let me know and I'll grab it off the table and we can taste through that. Obviously, I can't do a bunch of those, but you know, one or two would be, would be cool. And I do want to do a mystery uh, pour tonight as well. All right. So... Next up, let's check out this Bernheim. Uh, Devin. So, Devin, um, do you want me to do like do them as mystery samples, you're saying, though? Because you've got those in pairs. All right. So, Bernheim Barrel Proof is 125.2. This is A224. So, I was not super thrilled with A223 from last year, that batch. To me, it was um, very young, tight, closed off, aggressive. Didn't do much for me. Devin says, yes, number three. Well, Devin, let's, maybe we get into that next, man. Do you want me to reveal it first? <laughs> Jesse, bullet 12 rye, whiskey's gateway drug. <laughs> yeah, it's my campaign slogan. Um, Devin, you want me to do it blind or you want me to just go ahead and, and do it unblind? What do you think? Pink Dan says, my next blind would be fun too. We can do both of them, guys. That'll be cool. <clears throat> um, by the way, I just cracked open, um, which is going to be in the giveaway tonight, this 2023 Michter's 10 bourbon, the AA barrel from last year. This is uh, barrel 0027. And the one that I have that is my absolute favorite is 0026, so sister barrels. I crack this open, totally consistent. From 26 to 27, both of them are insane lights out whiskey. I, again, I don't know what it is about these A barrels, but I was curious to see what that comparison would be like as I opened another one. And I still have just a little bit of the previous bottle left for that side by side. Amazing stuff. So, for what it's worth, if I were you and, I, and you're looking to get one of those on secondary, I would look for those those lower barrel numbers because, in my experience at least, those have been better. But that that's, um, you know, your mileage may vary on that. David says, remember to hit the like. Yes, please, everybody hit that like. We've only got 100 people in here. I don't know if it's the time. Usually we, you know, even on a lighter night, we'll have more, more folks in here. So uh, it would definitely help if you guys hit that like button. 
What's up, Will Molnar? Going to see you next week, man. Uh, barrel pick time at Middle West Spirits. It's going to be a lot of fun. Okay. So let me grab those samples from Pink Dan and from uh, and from Devin. So Devin said number three. So Devin, I've got your box of samples here, and Dan, I've got your uh, number two, which is the next one in line. So Devin, look at this, man. Uh, Devin, are you thinking 3A and B? Are those the two you were talking about? Oh, Bourbon Retriever says first night of March Madness. I didn't even think. See, I don't watch basketball, so good call. Maybe we'll get a lot of folks on the replay then. Makes sense. Devin uh, says, yeah, sports ball night, Cam. <laughs> Joe. Well, looks like we got to go really late and catch the stragglers afterwards. <clears throat> All right, so before we get into those, let's check out this Bernheim Barrel Proof A224. Here we go. Okay, so similar to similar to last year's A223, tight, just uh, like kind of crispy caramel notes, uh, bright nuttiness, good brown sugar, I would say, tons of white pepper spice. And then just alcohol. So there you go. Um, still still a product that feels, at least right now, unimpressive to me on the nose. And I'll say it again. I say this every time I, I taste a wheat whiskey, which I know we're, we're doing a barrel pick of a wheat whiskey next week. But hear me out. Wheat whiskeys, to me, are a product that need more age in the barrel, more time in the barrel. The higher the percentage of wheat in a mash bill, in my experience the longer it needs to be in that barrel to get more barrel influence, round out the profile and add, actually add depth to the profile because wheat is not a super flavorful grain, right? It's a, it's a pretty neutral grain in mash bills. At least, I mean, that's kind of the way I look at it. Rye is going to give you, a, of course, more spice, but I think also more generally just it's more flavorful. So when you have a wheat whiskey like this, I think it needs more time. I believe this is rumored to be like six, seven, eight years old-ish in the blend. And for me, I feel like wheat whiskeys need to be at least 10 plus. They really come into their own 12 to 14. So yeah, we are doing a barrel pick of a wheat whiskey with Middle West Spirits, but those are in 30-gallon barrels. And it that adds the extra profile that you need in a more accelerated time frame. So it's going to be a six-year product thereabouts that we pick. But that barrel, as a 30-gallon, is going to taste much older. It's not going to defy logic the way it's going to taste, but it's going to have so much flavor. And I've tasted through those barrels, and it's amazing. So I'm excited for that. And the Bernheim, to me, at least on the nose right now, is just, yeah, it's what, yeah, I don't know. I actually like the palate on this. Strawberry jam. Very spicy. You can see it in my eyes. Huge spicy, huge vanilla, strawberry jam. That's actually very, very good on the palate for a sip. It's not a, uh, <laughs> it's not a sophisticated whiskey. It's very brash. Toasty. I mean, this is, this is toasted wheat bread for sure. That strawberry jam note is strong. Great finish. The way this thing comes through the palate, it ramps up like crazy, and the finish just very, very slowly decays, just kind of trails off. That's a that's a pretty that's a nice drinking whiskey. So the nose does not do it for me. But the palate is is pretty good. And I am going to compare this to Larceny C923, which I think is a, a, a bottle that a lot of folks are going to be familiar with in the chat. <clears throat> Jesse says, completely agree with you on the aging requirements for wheat versus rye whiskeys. The grain just doesn't have as much flavor to carry the product at young ages. Yeah. 
it's funny. It's funny tasting, you know, young rye, four year rye, just how much more flavor and and balance you can get. I'm not saying it's a balanced whiskey at four years old, but you can at least achieve an appropriate level of balance to put the bottle on the shelf and sell it to somebody. Whereas to me, if you have like a four year wheat whiskey, ugh, you, you, it better be in a smaller format barrel. But then nine times out of 10, if you put it in a smaller format barrel, you're going to get weird, crafty, farmy earth soil notes that are going to ruin the whiskey. So it's this trade off. But who has the patience to let wheat whiskey, which is a, a type of whiskey that is so niche in the market, who's going to have the patience to let that sit for 14 years and then release it? Pretty much just Heaven Hill, it seems like at this point, as very special releases and one-offs. What is up, Amy? Good to see you. Uh, Sean, I, I, unfortunately, I don't have an, any old elk in the house, so I, I can't uh, do that comparison for you. That's a tough one. That's a old elk is just a tough sell for me. Even though I saw a ten year age statement on one of their products recently, it's uh, it's challenging. Henry, I got you in for two. Thank you, man. If you were to choose one tasting note to be your favorite, well, that's a cool question. Which would it be? I'm gonna go. This is generic. This is super generic. But it to me, it's the sign of a wonderfully aged whiskey. And that tasting note for me is vanilla. And I know that is the most vanilla tasting note that you can say. Ha ha. But it's it's because once you get to like King of Kentucky level, that aged vanilla cream note that you get is so rich and so sweet that if a whiskey has that and it's an old an old enough whiskey to have that note, to not feel artificial in the in the mix, I I can't stay away from those kinds of whiskeys. Uh Evan Williams 23's got it. Heaven Hill 17's got it. Kinda. It's a little darker. It's more burnt sugars uh, and, and toastiness and kind of a little molasses. But then King of Kentucky's got it in droves. So it would be vanilla. And then if I had to choose a, a different note, it would be molasses. Vanilla and molasses are just like two incredible tasting notes for me. Vanilla cream particularly. Yeah. Yeah, Lynn, for sure. Thank you, Henry, for the super chat, man. I appreciate you. So let's uh, get this comparison set up now. Larson EC923, proof-wise, we're pretty much on the on the money. 1.2 proof difference between the two, right? So 0.6% ABV difference. And again, this is Larson EC923, which is pretty widely regarded as a, as a great batch. So does that make this an unfair comparison? I don't know, but at least it makes it one that a lot of people are going to be familiar with as I start talking about the similarities and differences. Uh, let's see, UK is about to go down in the first round. Whiskey consumption going up in Kentucky. Oh, God, the world doesn't need that. <clears throat> Henry says, thanks for answering. Love to hear others' favorite. What, so what's yours, Henry? What would be your favorite tasting note? I feel like a lot of people would say cherry. I think cherry is like just universally loved if you can get a, a, a very cherry-forward bourbon. I think dill might be one of the least favorites from people. <laughs> Paul P says, uh, weeded bourbon versus wheat whiskey. Don't expect it to be close. I'm actually, okay, first nosing there, though, Paul, was shockingly uh, similar. I, I actually don't know. I, I think it's on the front of the bottle, damn it. <laughs> yeah. So, Bernheim is 51% wheat. And Larceny, I think, is 20. I think Larceny is 68 corn, 20 wheat, 12 barley. So a 31% difference in the wheat content. It's not like we've got a 95.5 wheat whiskey here in the Bernheim. So they are kind of closely related to some degree. Oh, man. You know, this is a note I should have thought about. That's on the money. Butterscotch. Because when you get butterscotch, you're really typically thinking about something like this one one of these puppies this is a butterscotch bomb so i yeah but see modern whiskeys just tend to not have that note in the same way let's leave that on the table just to tempt me uh so amy thank you for the super chat much love cam and all click that like everyone to help out the channel thanks amy hit that like button guys Okay, color difference, very slightly darker for the Larceny C923. 
And it's a great batch of larceny. Lots of cinnamon on this one. Kind of a brighter cinnamon, though. Uh, I get, like, kind of a peach cobbler note on, on this uh, C923. Huh. That's a good batch. And I remember C923 being particularly sweet. It is... That is absolutely the case on this. All right. And now over to the Bernheim. Nose on the Bernheim, definitely, you know, more wheat bread forward, of course. More wheat in the, in the mash bill. But, uh, actually, the Larceny is coming off really strong peach cobbler notes um, on the nose. I've never picked that up on that batch, I don't think. And then, again, in comparison... The Bernheim's brown butter. I mentioned brown sugar earlier. It's getting a little more buttery. Uh, kind of like apple butter, you know? Like you go to, um, oh, what is it? Cracker Barrel. I think this, it, the, the Bernheim reminds me of going to Cracker Barrel and just, you know, buttering up your, <laughs> your, uh, your bread with your breakfast, your toast. I actually think the Bernheim is pretty, pretty flavorful. It takes a second to get there. You got to get past this kind of rough first impression on the on the pa uh, on the nose, especially. But even the front of the palate stings just a bit, but it opens up nicely. And again, back into that strawberry jam note that I was picking up earlier. So these are somewhat, you know, related. The larceny feels a little bit more. Yeah, cinnamon forward and kind of granular with the texture. And then the Bernheim is a little more smoothed out. And it's wheat, right? So it's going to, that sweet wheat kind of uh, more airy texture to the whiskey. Whereas that Larceny, yeah, it's got that grit. Almost smells textured. I, I like the Bernheim. I, act, I, I think that this batch, I didn't get to try the, what would it have been? B923. Uh, B923, the second batch that they released. Didn't get to try it. Didn't like the first batch. and But I don't still have it to compare. I wish I could. Maybe my memory's messed up and maybe this is just like the first batch. I think this is a little bit better and I think it's actually worth picking up and trying. So, there you go. Two for two tonight. Bullet and Bernheim. I didn't expect the Bernheim to perform well. Great pop. Oh, I love that Luke said pop. Thank you. It is pop. Uh, Luke also says juicy pear or plum, personal favorite. Yes, red fruits. I think a lot of folks like fruity stuff. Um, Tom Harper, one uh, weeder that I love, Rebel Cask Strength. I don't think I've tried one of those. All right, $10 super chat from uh, Yimosan, Yimosan. God, I, did you say how I should pronounce that earlier? Your uh, Your username there. If you did, I'm sorry, and I'm if I missed it. Anyways, please let me know so I can uh, <laughs> feel confident in what I in what I say and not feel bad for mispronouncing it. But thank you for the two uh, the two entries, the ten dollars super chat. Adam Booth, what's up, man? Strawberry peach or cigar? I love a tobacco note. I do love that. Uh, I like bourbon a lot. In for one entry, thank you. Uh, I like bourbon a lot. One says love the Larceny C923. It's a good batch. And it's so funny how having these side by side reveals so many different notes that I that I haven't picked up. You know, especially the C923, that peach cobbler thing. I don't get it in isolation, but in this side by side, I definitely do. <laughs> Billy says, I "Can't review scotch. One to two bottles on the table. Can't review bourbon. Forty-five bottles on the table. It is a problem." Henry Chen, my uh, favorite note would be that well-aged funk followed by red fruit, cherry, ding, ding, off the top of my head, Sam Houston 15 or Calumet. Yeah, those are huge semi-medicinal cherry bombs, depending on which ones you get. Some of those Sam 15s were um, just lights out whiskey. Why is Photoshop verifying? What are we doing? Um, and then the Calumets, of course, too. 
Uh, Jesse says, usually not a fan of Larceny. Barrel Proof, I'm totally with you. But I really enjoyed the Bernheim Barrel Proof I picked up last year. Uh, C923 is the only Larceny so far I've really liked. Yeah. C922 still is my favorite, but that might just be personal preference. Joe, they, they were, they were going to put the Cracker Barrel note in the label. A nose that evokes memories of type 2 diabetes and bad decisions. <laughs> Keith, what is up? Let me get you in here for two. Thanks, Keith. Luke, just give me a basket of rolls, please. Soda, according to Will's brother. He spent too much time in Minnesota and Wisconsin. Minnesota. Oof. Cold, cold, cold up there. I don't think I don't know if I've ever been. No, I have been to Minnesota on tour one time, but it was just like passing through, and I don't really remember it. Keith T says uh, Werther's. Yes. All right. So let me grab some of these super chats, guys, because a lot of them have come in on Venmo and PayPal, and I wanna I wanna say thank you to everybody and recognize you guys. I know it gets a little redundant sometimes when I read these off, but um, it's like a crazy rush of things that come in all at once and so i gotta get to them and uh i do appreciate it so much jeffrey smith i got you in for four on paypal says awesome sample pack love the content thank you i think that's the only paypal so we'll head over to venmo now and check this out wow oh my gosh <laughs> that is a uh, that's amazing okay Dennis says, cheers, a little late to the party. Never late, Dennis. I know people are watching basketball or whatever, or whatever's on right now. No big deal. Ah, I tell you, that Bernheim, I would sip that bottle. I think it's really good. Will says, you didn't miss much if you don't remember it. I feel like that's kind of a, um, it's like words to live by, you know, <laughs> for better or worse. Uh, Travis, I got you in for two, says yet another attempt to provide Cam a way to get more floor whiskey. Sigh. <laughs> Thanks, Travis. Got you in, man. Uh, Christine Vasco with a massive super chat. Holy crap. Christine, let me spell your name correctly here. I got you in for 10 entries. $50 super chat. Thank you. It says, hey, why not give it a try? Either way, supporting you so it's a win. Thank you. Cheers to that. That was like the lamest fist pump ever. I don't know what I was doing. All right. Cheers. Uh, okay. I'm going to make one complaint on the Bernheim. Little grassiness. It's starting to show through. I know I'm ultra sensitive to that note, so... You know, take that for for what you will. Some folks aren't as offended by that. All right, have Jeep Will whiskey in for a twenty five dollars super chat. Says that sample pack is a banger. I'm glad you think so. So yeah, Dusty Granddad, Heaven Hill seventeen and eighteen, Bernheim, uh, the new Bullet twelve, Mictors ten A batch, fifteenth anniversary, thirteenth colony, uh, the employee bottle, Old Forester, River Roots port finish. Just yeah, trying to trying to make it worth your while, guys. Uh, Jesse is in for two with a pizza emoji, which reminds me, I forgot to watch uh, the pizza review. I watch every Dave Portnoy pizza review. Forgot to watch tonight's, so I'll have to watch it after the stream. All right, Toshi with a signature massive super chat here in for $50, 10 entries says, Evening Cam, looking forward to your thoughts on the Heaven Hill 18. We're going to get there. We got two mystery samples to do. Yeah, I think we'll do those next, and then we'll get into the Heaven Hill 18 and 17, and we're going to go deep on that. So my goal is around 10 p.m.-ish, 10.05, to dive deep into this, do a massive amount of comparisons. I might have to go grab more glasses out of the dishwasher because it's done running now. <laughs> I want to compare it to some various Elijah Craig Barrel Proofs, 17. Yeah, we're going to get into the weeds, but I like it that way. Will... Will Monar in for, good lord, dude, a hundred dollars super chat. All right, we're gonna, I gotta say cheers. Yeah, we'll do it with the, we'll do it with the Bernheim. Let's see if there's more cut grass on this. Cheers, man. Been a rough couple days. Here's to Duke and Gary, two of the bestest good boys. Please split, please split my entries between Joe and myself. Joe, that, Will, that's awesome, man. 
So I will put Joe in for 10 and Will in for 10. Yeah, cheers, guys. You, you, you both lost your uh, both lost your pups uh, recently. And uh, I don't I don't know what that's like. You know, I've never I've never had a dog and. You know, going through the 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 death of a pet, though, is is tough. I can only speak, you know, from a cat point of view. So I think it's a little different. It's a, I mean, I love my cat, of course. But I think a dog is something a little bit more. Uh, there's a little more connection there, I think. So cheers, man. All right. We have more super chats coming in. I think we got four more. So let's just knock them out. Brian uh, says, sign me up. Got you in for two, man. $10 super chat. Appreciate it. Adam also in for two. Adam Boothby in for two. Says in for two. Got to reduce Toshi's chances if he shows up. <laughs> he showed up. <laughs> okay. Joe is in, uh, in for five. Thank you, Joe. $25 super chat says cheers. And finally, Leo Ruth is in for four. And I think we are caught up now. Leo says heaven hill versus heaven hill. There can only be one. There can only be one. All right, 128 in here now. We've got the numbers boosted a bit. Hit that like button on your way in. We're going to do two mystery, sam uh, three mystery samples, excuse me, because we have a pair from uh, Devin M in the chat. Uh, and I'm getting a text from somebody from the percussion section. Give me one sec. Um... Hang on. Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. Got to make sure everybody knows what's going on with the uh, rehearsal tomorrow. Yeah. Okay, I can do this in a second. Sorry about that. <laughs> Jesse. Well, that's the that's the point, right? Uh, you may love your cat, but it doesn't seem like the cat particularly loves you. Yeah, she look. I've heard stories about if you if you die in, in the house, you know, and you have a cat and there's no one else that lives there that it'll start eating you like in a very short amount of time. <laughs> and yeah, she would it'd be within the same day. I'd be I'd be sitting on the couch. That would be a wrap and she she'd be she'd be, you know, <clears throat> having dinner. Toshi says condolences guys that's sad about the pups. My dog is the best my best friend. Sucks to know someday he'll be gone too. Got to love him while they're here. Absolutely, man. Yeah, Luke need need Miss Peaches in more videos. That's funny. He says, I watch every one bite as well. Tony Hall. Hey, Cam, fellow Columbus bourbon lover here. What's up, Tony? Love the content. It's so weird to say, what's up, Tony? That's my dad's name. Pretty sure I know where you picked those up this evening. Yeah, I, I was over at Arena uh, after work. So it was, we I got out of rehearsal early today. So it must have been around 2 p.m. that I, that I got there. Everyday uh, Reviews and Rants says, love what you're doing, man. Keep up. Uh, the great work from one former percussionist to another. Oh, Blue Coats, oh, 2000 to 01. Nice. I marched in 2013 at Coats, but I got injured and had to go home uh, just before move-ins ended, which was unfortunate. But that's awesome. I appreciate it. Thanks for saying Thanks for saying something. And the super chat, I got you in for two. <laughs> okay. Um, I am going to run in the kitchen very quickly and grab some glasses for these blind samples. Uh, and other things, but give me like 30 seconds. All right, we are good to go now. Let's get into this. Clear a little space. Dennis says 129. 
Will, I catch myself running right now because I took the boot off. I, I should still be in the boot, but I, I can't stand it anymore. So I took the boot off, and I catch my, <clears throat> myself running down the stairs right now. I'm like, damn it, this is how I got here in the first place. All right, so we're gonna do pink. Uh, we're gonna do pink Dan's sample first, his blind sample, and I will show you guys what I am drinking before I know. I'll turn my head, and you guys will see the reveal. Please, just as a reminder, no spoilers in the chat about what I am tasting. If if it ends up being Elijah Craig, don't say that it's Elijah Craig, and don't immediately start talking about Heaven Hill products or, you know. Please, please, no spoilers at all. Also, I can't get this stuff off here, Dan. This is uh, one hell of a a wrap job. Sheesh. Well, all right, we're going to be here all night. Settle in. <laughs> Let's see if I can just... Okay. Yeah, you can just do it that way. All right. Luke says, got to keep that boot on. Yeah, I mean, I'm almost pain-free. I have a doctor. It's been six weeks today since I, since I, or six weeks yesterday, actually, since I broke it. So should be pretty well wrapped up. Doctor's appointment on Monday uh, to kind of finalize things, I hope, and then be nice to be done with all that. Will says, he's peeing in the kitchen now. That sounds like, uh, sounds like fun. Not sure what Sarah would think of that. Tom Harper says, I spy a Knob Creek 18. It's quick. Type something inappropriate while Cam is gone. Um, I spy a Knob Creek 18. What do you think of that one, Cam? What's the highest you'd pay? Tom, I like Knob Creek 18 quite a bit. It's a hard bottle for me to stop drinking once I start. And to me, that's like the sign of a great whiskey. Uh, even if it's a whiskey that has, you know, some imperfections, things you could complain about. I mean, they all do. Very few whiskeys, I would say, are, you know, 10 out of 10 type type pours. I think batch two is better than batch one, in my opinion. Uh, but I think they're both good. I, I just think it's a great profile. It's that soft but intense oakiness that you get at that 100 proof. It would be great if it's a little higher proof. Beggars can't be choosers. Okay. So let's now, uh, let me show you what I'm sipping on. Gosh, I guess I got to get my knife. Pink Dan number. Wait, number four we already did. Yeah, right. Cool. So number two is next. All right. My knife is in the other room, so let's use these. Giant scissors. And I'm not going to look at this. I'm going to show it to you guys so you know what I'm sipping on, and we'll do this mystery sample. Come on. Okay. Cool. So... Here we go. No spoilers, please remember. <clears throat> and uh, hopefully you can you can read this. Zoom in, because this might be hard to read. All right. Let me know if you need to see this again, or if I need to hold it closer to the camera, I can do that as well. But this is what is going to be in my glass. Do a quick blind review of it. Reveal it to myself at the end. And yeah, let me know if, if I need to scoot it up. I'll look at the chat in three, two, one. Okay, let's see. What's up, Marty? Good to see you, man. Can't read it, says Guy. Let me see if I can get it closer to you guys. <clears throat> All right. Let's see if the uh, the camera should focus right on my head. Should be up here. So let me know if this ends up focusing. If I put my hand behind it, it might work. Let me know if you guys can read this. All right, three, two, one. Okay. Let me see. Closer to the camera. I just don't know if the autofocus is going to work. 
We got old eyes, can't see it. I need trinoculars for that. Oh no! I should have had Sarah rewrite these cards then. Alright. That is the worst scribe, says Dennis. Pink Dan, you're being called out, man. You're being called out. Alright, I'm going to review it anyways. Still needs to be closer. Here. Let me know if you can see that. I promise I'm not looking. I can't see it in front of me. Let me know if that works. All right. Either way, we're going to get into it now. <laughs> Dan says, next time I'll make the cards better. Got it, says Mike. Okay. Well, there we go. Okay, first impression on this. Banana, juicy fruit. This is coming off Barton to me. Again, I'm not, you know, I'd rather just review it and take a guess after I kind of give you my my good or bad, you know, my, my impressions of this thing. So it's a lot, it's barrel char, it's it's banana, it's um, it's juicy fruit gum, red fruit note, between cherry and strawberry. Oh, wow. That is a candied fruit, candy strawberry. Wow. <clears throat> That's pretty good. <clears throat> Will, I can see letters now or shapes of letters. Get it together, Will. That means you've had too much to drink. <laughs> wow, this this tastes great. This really tastes great. It's a little bright, a little young feeling. Oh, man, the palate is so, so much red fruit. I mean, it's a lot of... I like that. It's a lot of banana on the nose for me. It's still there on the palate, but the amount of red fruit you get from this, remarkable. Yeah. It's starting to develop a little more uh, chocolate and, and, and oak presence now, and it's kind of a younger oak note. Yeah, it's getting it's actually getting spicier to me now. <clears throat> I have a little water. Jason, you did not miss Heaven Hill 18. That's going to be next. We got a couple mystery pours to do before we get there. <clears throat> All right, so I guess wow. And now it's getting like I'm getting nuttiness. What what is going on with this pour? Huh. This is kind of all over the place for me right now. You know, proof on this, I think is 100 at most. It, it feels, it's easy drinking. Age? Eight, maybe? Eight years? It, and that could really depend on the distillery uh, of how this profile's coming off. It feels like it has some age, but not in a, in like a big aged oak kind of way. It's just in, it's basically like some whiskeys you can leave in a barrel for a long time. They don't get a ton of oak and tannin to them, but they develop their flavors and the flavors get deeper and, and richer without tons of oak attaching itself to those flavors. That's what this is like. So that's why I'm like, it could be eight years. Uh, it could also be like five years, but the flavors are developed, but the oak presence is not old to me. <clears throat> but now I'm getting peanut butter. So it's like, what the hell is this? Crushable whiskey. I'm going 90. I'm going 97 proof on this. I might go 10 years old. I might go 10 years old, 97 proof. It's got this banana thing, so it's Barton or it's uh, Jack. This could be like a Jack 10, but I've, I'm still leaning a little more towards the Barton side of things. 
yeah, so let's just go. Let's go with Jack. No, it's not Jack 10. I know it's not Jack 10. Unless it's a newer batch. Screw it. Let's say Jack 10. What do we got? Oh. I'll take it. It's Jack Daniels. It is Jack Daniels finished with toasted pecan chips. Dude, Matt Porter talks about this bottle. This is badass whiskey. And I t I kept saying, now I'm getting a little nuttiness to this. It's the pecan. I, you know, I'll take that. It's 120 proof. It does not drink 120. Excuse me. That is that drinks like a like I said 97, 100 at most. That is awesome whiskey. <laughs> Holy shit. If you have a bottle of this, savor it. Oh, that is great. I have to pour that back in the sample bottle. The the red fruit note on that whiskey is so crazy on the palate. The nose is a little more traditional, you know, Jack Daniels type stuff. There's a little funkiness on the finish. I think that could just be that Jack Daniels uh, Lincoln County process finish on there. But it's also <clears throat> there's something else to it. I think I can I feel like I can taste extra. You know, it's pecan chips. I feel like I can taste a little extra something in the finish from the finish, right? From the finishing uh, chips. Well, thanks, Dan. That's a cool sample and very unexpected. I would have never guessed that that was finished unless I was trying to think of what that red fruit note would be. But it's not finished in the way that you expect to taste a finished product and automatically be able to know that. It's not too obvious. All right. Uh, Marty, the new Bernheim's here, wondering if it's worth the pickup. Marty, I actually think it is. I actually didn't like the first batch, didn't try the second batch. I think this this most recent one is worth it. It's not world-changing whiskey, but it's a pretty good example, I feel like, of what that line can start to develop into. And maybe they're going the same way that Larceny Barrel Proof did, where it, it started off kind of weak, but then over the years, it steadily improves. Maybe that's what Bernheim's going to do. Uh, Sean, what was it I missed? It was the uh, the toasted pecan pecan chip finish Jack Daniels Tennessee Tasters at 120 proof. So it's probably not 10 years old, right? I'm not sure how old that stuff was. Oh, cool, Marty. The, uh, grab it. The Turks will be here tomorrow and we'll crack it. That'll be great. <laughs> Adam, I love your comment. That is funny. Oh, Dan, uh, Cam, I recommend taking a larger than normal drink on this. It'll give you a different feel on it. I I will try that, but not tonight because I want to. I got to leave some liver space tonight. Put it on the side table so I don't forget to. Uh... Jason, yeah, we did bullet at the beginning of the stream. All right, another another quick reminder, hit that like button. And another quick reminder here, now that we have 131 folks hanging out, let me recap the giveaway. <clears throat> We're going to have two winners. Two winners for 10 samples each. One-ounce samples, you get 10 of them. So 10 ounces of whiskey total. It's going to be Heaven Hill 18, Heaven Hill 17, 1989 Old Granddad 114 from National Distillers. The best stuff. Uh, Bernheim... A224, Bullet 12-Year, the new rye, the old version of the Bullet 12-Year rye, so you can do your own side-by-side, -side. and hopefully reference this review when you do it and just see if you get the same or, or you know, different differences than I got. Uh, the River Roots Port Finish Distillery Exclusive, the Old Forster Employee Bottle. 13th Colony, 15th Anniversary, if you want to try this, you know, to see what people are talking about with it, because there's a lot of mixed opinions. And then finally, an A barrel of Mictor's 10 Bourbon 2023. This is a stellar A barrel, uh, just as good as the one for me that won my, my six-way blind. So those are your 10 samples. Pretty, pretty decent uh, giveaway tonight.
<laughs> Marty has a terrible head cold drinking mellow corn on ice. Man, when, I, when I'm sick, I can't drink. It's just, I shut it down. Usually it's about a week. I just, cold turkey, week, no drinking, and it really helps. Marty, thank you, man. Got you in for two entries. Uh, Marty says, everyone support the channel. I promise it is not cheap to do. That is very true. It's a break-even business at best. <laughs> Cheers, everyone. Thanks, Marty. Thanks thanks for the support. Thanks for saying that. Uh, I missed uh, I missed Dan Irving's super chat earlier. If I ever miss one in the live chat, guys, please call me out. So, Dan Irving, I got you in for four entries. Thank you. He says, cheers, Cam. Keep up the great work. I think I missed Dan, right? Let me make sure I missed him. Yes. Thanks, man. All right. Everyday Reviews and Rants says, just got a trio of double oaks today. Uh, Peerless double oak bourbon. Peerless double oak rye. I have not had the rye. I bet that is out of this world. And Sagamore double oaked. That one, I, I'm not a big fan of that one. The rye is great if you can find. Okay, there you go. I've got to find one of those. And I've got to, I've got to go get a Peerless toasted. I'm so sad I missed the the release because I was sick. Um, and then bought the Larceny B523 the other day and was underwhelmed. I like the B523, but it, I still didn't like it as much as C922. Oh, this is an old... I'm like, this is 15 minutes ago. Sorry, I missed this. And then Dan H. said, any input from the group on rare character maple-finished bourbon or rye bottles? I have no uh, experience with those. Maybe others do. I know there are some real crazy rare character collectors out there. But it, the secondary price on some of those like six- and seven-year bottles is pretty crazy. JG, in for one. <laughs> Marty says, well, I am a legend. Yes, you are, man. JG, in for one. Thanks, Jay. Says, whiskey cheers, of course. <laughs> Amy, sorry, can't miss the last half hour with a work call. What happened? <laughs> the hardest question to answer. Record scratch, rewind. Lance, got you in for four. Cheers. Thank you, Lance. Luke says, from what I can find, the Jack Daniels toasted pecan is not age stated. Okay. I mean, if it's Jack, it's probably, what, four to six years old or something? Uh, Jesse, I grew up in the mountains of East Tennessee. Clear spirits from a friend of a friend are still widely used as medicine there. Gotta say, it actually works. To me, it just makes, like, my congestion worse and it makes my body feel bad. Maybe it's because I drink so much whiskey normally that, you know, I don't know. Uh, Mike B joining late. Did Heaven Hill 18 improve? Mike, don't, no spoilers, Mike. I, I, but actually, it's been improving. And so we're going to taste it tonight uh, here after two more mystery samples. Cheers, Cam. Hope you're feeling uh, along better. I know that was a typo, but I wanted to read it. Thank you, Mike. And we've got a few more Venmo Super Chats before we move on to this side by side double header blind sample. And for these. I did have Sarah make cards for Devin's samples. So we are going to be good. This side letters numbers, this side answers. All right. So you guys will be able to uh, to see these more clearly. I always tell people, if you want to send things, I can always have Sarah make cards for them if you just send the answers. But it, the other great thing, and Amy started doing this when she was sending blinds, is she would send cards like this. Black note cards with metallic Sharpie, whether it's the gold, bronze, or the silver color. It's the best way to do these on camera so that you can have that contrast. All right. Couple couple Venmos here. I think, uh, I think Scott is first up. Yep. Scott in for 10 entries. Good Lord, man. Thank you, Scott. $50 super chat from Scott. Appreciate that. Ryan uh, Copperwolf here. In for 10 also. 
Jeez, guys, thank you. <laughs> Holy shit. All right, guy, I've got a toast. I got to say cheers to you for this. <sighs> yeah, it's uh, guy with a hundred and fifty dollar super chat. Thirty entries for guy. It says cheers. Glad you're feeling better. Enjoying the live stream as usual. Thank you, guy. Thank you, everybody, for the super chats. One hundred and fifty dollars is ridiculous, man. So. Uh, I can't tell you all also how far the Super Chats, Patreon, I cannot tell you how far this goes in being able to hopefully do cool stuff. Hopefully you think it's cool stuff for the channel and to try to give back in whatever way I can, whether it's, of course, like the giveaways, I know. But Patreon, we do giveaways every month. I just kind of randomly put up things at cost if I can if I can pick up extra bottles and stuff. This, this all just kind of enables things to, to happen, so... So so appreciated. Insane. Guy, man. Thank you. Uh that bullet, 12 year now with a black tea note. I like black tea, but I think a lot of people in uh a lot of whiskey drinkers don't like black tea notes in their whiskey. Particularly MGP will give you that, and that is an MGP rye. Mike Conklin with a hundred dollar super chat, man. Toshi needs competition, win or lose, love the channel, and happy to support. Mike, thanks, man. Sheesh. And and Eric, Eric F. Eric, is it Far Farrar? Eric Farrar or Farrar? And now it'd be Farrar, right? Eric Farrar he says, "Just want that Heaven Hill seventeen and eighteen in for three fifteen dollars super chat." I got you, man. Thank you. And then I think we got two more in the live chat now. We got Ron. With four entries. It says, good evening all. Cam, good to see you're feeling better. Slotch, thank you, man. Yes. Cheers. Tom says, Guy just bought you a 2009 Kia. <laughs> Thanks, Guy. We need it. Sarah's car is going to... Sarah's car is going to kick the bucket suit, I think. I mean, but to be fair, it's hanging in there. Okay, David, got you in for one. One for the legend, Amy Bohm. Oh, cool. I'll say for Amy on that. Uh, to 10K subscribers. Thanks, David. Joe, okay. So, Jeb, uh, and, and I'll pour these out now. I'll pour these samples out. 3A and 3B of the, the pack that Devin sent. Thank you, Devin. In these in these amazing bottles. Uh, what are they called again? Liquid Ministry. Liquid Ministry bottles. Okay. So, um, Joe, Jeb actually texted me about that same thing, and I haven't gotten back to him because I think it was, again, been a last two days were a little stressful getting into rehearsals with the orchestra and stuff. And I, I always get, I always work myself up over first rehearsals with, with new pieces that I haven't played before. As you guys can imagine, uh, knowing my personality, Jeb said that the Barrel King hot chocolate, like whatever that was, the stag burai, I think is what it was called. Jeb was like, this stuff is amazing. And um, I can only imagine that it would be very, very good. Drinking the Barrel King, what did you call it? Hot chocolate rye bourbon cherry cordial. <laughs> it might be good times adjacent and or a cocktail versus a whiskey, but don't care. It's delicious. I mean... What and like what was the verbiage on that bottle? The bottle I loved. I think it was was it the sticker because I can't imagine that would have been the front label to have kind of like the crazy artwork on it. Let me scroll back here to what Jeb was saying. He sent me a picture of it. Oh, that's funny. It says chocolate cherry stag barai batch eighty. It's a sexy story. Here we go. One barrel Oaxacan hot chocolate filthy cherry finished barai. Holy crap! What does that mean? That's a <laughs> that sounds. That sounds like something I want to put in my body. One barrel stag finished bourbon. One barrel port cherries plum cider finished rye. One barrel heirloom champagne style apper, <laughs> apple cider port finished bourbon. Two barrels eight year old MGP bourbon. <laughs> what does that mean? That's pretty cool. I bet it tastes amazing. Wow. 
Dan, uh, Pink Dan says, can't keep up with the big boy super chats. Uh, he says this on Venmo. Um, can't keep up with the big boy super chats, but want to keep supporting the channel. I got you. Thanks, man. Hey, look. And it, 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 it takes a village. I mean, really, a channel like this, I'm, what I'm finding is ask for help and people people are willing to help with small tasks, big tasks, and it's like anything else, you know? We're, I think we're, we're stronger together, and I, it's been so cool to see everything grow. Um, let's see. Steven Edwards with the $50 Super Chat. Thank you, Steven. Let me get you in here real quick. 10 entries. Thank you. 142 proof J Rieger private stock order today. I, I saw that pop up. Is that their own distillate or is that someone else? First hazmat. Hazmats are fun. Even if the whiskey's a little subpar. There, you know, and I'm not saying theirs is. I have no idea. But like even a even just an okay whiskey at hazmat is just something it's so fun to drink it. <laughs> Jesse, Cam, it sounds like the car may be cutting in front of the new laptop in the things to spend thousands on list. I'll take <laughs> I'll take things to spend thousands on for 1000. <laughs> what is a new car? All right. Enough talking. That's I'm talking too much. Well, I'll get there's a few more Venmos that have come in and I will get to those in a sec, but for now, this side letters and numbers. That's the dummy card. 3A, 3B, dummy card. And now here we go. So let me show you. It's got a weird sound in my headphones. Are we still good here? Check, check. Yeah, we're still good. Okay, let me show you guys. Here's what's in 3A. We'll just call this glass one. All right. Uh, this, you should be able to see this. Again, please no spoilers. So glass one and we'll, you know, this is kind of a head to head, I guess. And then I'm gonna show you glass two. All right, three, two, one, put that down. Now glass two. And there you go. And I'll show, I can show these again, kind of maybe, you know, halfway through or something. So let's do it. Let's get into this. Glass one, three A, color. Glass B is perhaps a smidge darker, but both just, you know, look like. Oh, that's weird. Huh. Okay, that took a second. Like at first it smelled um, very rocky, very mineral on the front of that. And now it's settling in and it's 100% a Buffalo Trace product. But the first nosing on glass A, funky. Uh, low proof buffalo trace, honey, dark, you know, dark grapey notes. Uh, let me confirm that. Yeah, totally. And then, let's see, glass two. Not buffalo trace glass two, I don't think. Huh, glass two smells good, but I... I can't quite understand it. It's one of those whiskeys that is kind of all coming at you at the same time, and you can't, you know, things are flying by your your nose, and you can't pick out the individual notes. It just hits you as one unit. Feels It feels to be higher proof, I think, glass two. Uh, Josh says, what's the orchestra working on that's new? So, Josh, um, not a new piece necessarily. It's not like a modern, you know, something from a from a living composer or anything. But it's a piece that I've never played, and most people in the orchestra have never played. Rachmaninoff Symphony One, and I mean everybody everybody plays Rachmaninoff, but Symphony One, there there's you know stories about it. I think after the premiere, he burned the score because it was it went so terribly and it wasn't received well. And so the the piece was reconstructed from the parts, you know, the individual parts in the orchestra. They reconstructed the score, and then it's just a notorious piece for having errors in in different parts and different scores and additions over the years. It's actually a great piece, but it's just it just never saw you know as much play as 
his other music. So we're doing that Symphony 1. That's the only thing percussion plays on this week. There's a violin soloist doing the Sibelius Violin Concerto, and they're playing some Mozart uh, for, for the beginning of the concert. But Rachmaninoff Symphony 1, the fourth movement, some real badass parts. Five uh, five percussion players, big snare drum part, so it's it's been fun to play that. Um. Jesse says, our Rachmaninoff symphony says, damn complex. This is infamous uh, piano concertos. Yeah, I would say uh, if you know symphonic dances, I know guys, sorry, I'm nerding out real quick. If you know symphonic dances, Jesse, go listen to symphonic dances and then listen to Rachmaninoff symphony one. And they're so interlinked, but they're like 40 years apart. It was his first piece and his last piece he wrote for orchestra. And they, they have so many similarities. So it's kind of a cool bookend to his, his orchestral output. All right, so let's taste glass A here. Glass one. Glass one, I do still think this is a Buffalo Trace product. And I think it's Weller 12. I think this is Weller 12. It has that Buffalo Trace weeded note to it, which, again, I, I said that when I first smelled it, there was like a big mineral punch. I hate I hate to call the bottle up front. I want Let me think stats first. Let me think if it really does feel 90 proof and 12 years old. It feels higher proof than... than because I was low on proof earlier, so I'm probably low now. So maybe that's antique or foolproof. But it feels like a weeded Buffalo Trace product is the point for glass A. All right, glass B. This is... Now, B feels... Now, it, B feels muted on the nose. Again, I can't... I don't understand what's coming out of the glass. There's a little bit of like a... Oh, not turpentine. But some kind of like a little bit of an, a chemical kind of note on this one. Hmm. It's got a generic profile, but I like it. And generic doesn't mean young and bad. It just means like it tastes like whiskey, but I can't I can't pick it apart. I don't know why. And everything that Devin sent me, all of his, his his four different blinds, they're all in pairs. So if this is any indication, you guys are saying that you love this blind, then this th that bodes well for the rest of the ones he sent. And I'm going to shoot some of those in video form, not just on live streams like this. God, what is glass one? I don't, I don't know. It does, it's got to be Buffalo Trace. I mean, it could just be standard Buffalo Trace. No, it's a higher proof. I don't know what the hell that is. Okay, back to glass two. Starting to get into glass two more now. Um, hot chocolate, Swiss Miss hot chocolate packet. Oh, God, there was a note. What is this? It's a little bit of a of a sappy wood, uh, grapefruit sappy wood note. Fresh, fresh wood with grapefruit. Reminds me of like the, just a little bit of the still Austin products, the high ride bourbon bottled and bond. I mean, that's the better whiskey, right? Like, that that's the more interesting whiskey. But it's hard to wrap your head around what is going on with it. And it keeps flashing. I think it's this cherry note that flashes in and flashes out. The, yeah. The nose on glass one's better. 
for sure. I can't wait to find out what these are. I cannot wait. Because it feels like... It feels like you're trying to make a point, Devin, about glass one. You know? Like, if that's a Buffalo Trace product, it feels like you're trying to pull me away from it to something else. It's kind of working, if that's the goal. That Swiss Miss hot chocolate packet note is totally it, glass two. Okay. I'm going to say glass one is well or foolproof. Yep. And I'm going to say glass two. Rare breed. Which one do I like better? Glass one by just a little bit. It's more distinct in its profile. It's sweeter. Glass two is very good. The palette is very good on it. But the nose lacks. I've got to give this to glass one. So those are my guesses. Rare, rare breed and well and, and well are foolproof. So I'm gonna go bottle guesses. I'm not gonna go uh stat guesses, I guess, on this. 3A. Holy shit. Okay. Old rip. This is what okay. I said this was a weeded Buffalo Trace product. And I couldn't figure out the proof. And I was like, well, they're 12 foolproof antique. So I, I feel really, really good about that guess. Oh, and I have enough to make a review of this. Devin, thank you, dude. Thank you. Yes. I'm, I have never tasted this in my house in like a an environment that I'm comfortable like sitting and getting into a whiskey. I've tasted Old Rip one time in my life. And I was hosting a, I was hosting a, a not a private tasting, but a tasting at this club, at this golf club, uh, for the symphony, actually. I did a live stream about that last year or a year and a half ago, something like that. And at the end of the day, after leading everything, I was still hanging out and talking with people, but I got to taste Old Rip. And very cool. It tasted great in the moment, you know? But I, I had so many distractions, I couldn't focus on it. I mean, look, that's, that's good, but... It's not like what I would think old rip, you know, as good as that should be given the given the hype. There's a reason it kept falling in between the cracks for me, though, on the profile. Okay. Man, that's awesome. Um, 3B. Yeah, and uh, so Jesse says... If you averaged out your initial two guesses on Old Rip, which is Weller 12 and Antique, you would have come mighty close. Well done. Yeah, I think for, for me, I would never imagine that somebody would send Old Rip in something like this. And it's not even a bottle that pops into my head because I, I'm, I just don't drink it. You know, I've never had it more than that one time. All right. So I said 3B Rare Breed. Oh, interesting. Yeah, this was hard to wrap my head around. This is that nine-year Penelope blend that people were saying was very good. It is very good on the palate. The nose is just too closed. I can smell the MGP now, and that's why I went Rare Breed, because there are some similarities between these things. Um, Nine years, 109 proof. So I did have... So I had this pegged as well as foolproof it, which is 114, and I had it pegged as Rare Breed at 116.8. That's pretty much the proof difference between these two, two proof points. So I, I did call out the higher proof. I didn't necessarily, I mean, the age would be hard to distinguish because Rare Breed is a blend, and I thought that was full proof, which is usually about six or seven. But yeah, 109 proof, 85% corn, 10 rye, three barley, two wheat in this Penelope blend. I just think the nose lacks... It doesn't say anything. It just smells like whiskey. And then the palate. And look, we're meant to drink drink whiskey, not smell it. 
palette's great. But I think the old rip takes it. I'm, and I'm glad the old rip takes it. Wow. The old rip is getting oakier as it sits in the glass. I, I appreciate that. So I'll pour that back and uh, show you 3A. I'm so happy I have enough of this to do a, a review of Old Rip. Thank you, Devin, again, man. Very cool. Okay. Get those out of the way. I think it's time to get to some Heaven Hill craziness. Some Heaven Hill 18 craziness. So we're going to get this poured out. <clears throat> Andrew Kelly, I'm eating Swiss chocolate made with coffee with my bourbon right now. It does good things. <laughs> I bet that does good things. I bet that does do good things. Um, guys, please let me know if I've missed any super chats in the live chat. I think we're good and caught up. And then I've got two more, or maybe just one more actually in the Venmo. I got Dan and then Thad. I'm going to get Thad here. in for four with a music and martini emoji. Thank you, man. Got you in there. Great. We are officially caught up. And uh, and Dan sent me photos of that toasted pecan. Yeah, that toasted pecan finish, Matt Porter raves about that bottle, and I can, I can see why. So Matt Porter's two for two tonight on the bullet 12-year rye and now the Jack Daniels toasted pecan finish. And I, I tell you what, if there's anybody's palate that I trust the most, let me say, let me rephrase. If there's anybody's palate I trust the least, it would be Dan Shook. I'm just kidding, Dan. But if there's somebody pal somebody's palate I trust the most, it's Matt Porter. Like, hands down, far and away, I trust Matt. Whatever Matt says is good, I'm there. And he he showed it, you know. He nailed it tonight. All right, let's do this now. This table is a freaking madhouse. <laughs> Let me put some things onto the onto the floor. More floor whiskey. Get the Bernheim out of here too. A little, just a little reformatting of the table. It's weird to see Glenn Cairns on the table because I, I swear them off. Okay. Jesse says, I guess that's why Matt's the world top whiskey taster, but Cam is the reigning Matt Mad Well, I'm the I'm the Matt Madness champions champion. Champion match champion. But I'm not the reigning Matt Madness champion. So hopefully 2024 I can redeem myself. Len says, I'm so ready to order Matt's inaugural bottle with Barrel King next month. Yeah, man. I can't wait to taste it. I cannot wait. Circle City Bourbon. Cheers. Trying to obtain a Heaven Hill next uh, 18 next week when I visit Kentucky. Yeah, good luck. I don't know how any of that works. I've never really stood in line at the distilleries, but if you can get one at SRP, that would be awesome. Marty's Cameron. I think they proofed the bullet down too much to make it from being great. I, you know, Marty, I agree, but I also think if you consider, I mean, look, 12-year MGP Rye, I know the proof is... It's neutered down to 92 proof. But what a great rye to have on the market readily available for not just whiskey enthusiasts. I think it's going to make non-whiskey drinkers and non-rye drinkers both like whiskey and like rye and get in at a price point that makes sense for 50 or 55 bucks. So I, I you know, for me, it's like take the good with the bad because there's so much MGP that's going to flood the market here soon with all of those 10-year barrels the 10-year 36% rye bourbon barrels that have been dumped onto the market that people are buying up, all the NDPs, there's going to be a glut of old MGP, which is a stellar problem for us to have. And I, and it's not just bourbon. There's rye, a lot of rye floating around too, it seems. And if that's the case, then this is just a great option from a legacy distillery to have that MGP option. And then you'll start seeing, I think, other old old stuff as well pop up at higher proofs. 
And as long as the consumer is educated enough to know that it's the same thing between two different brands and they're both distilled in Indiana, then hopefully they can make that connection and go from the bullet to something maybe a little bit more uh, advanced, you know. <clears throat> I agree with the 13th Colony Rise of Better Buy at 45. I got to disagree with that. But I actually don't mind the 13th Colony Rye, the base rye. But I think the, I, I like the bullet, I think, better. Josh says, why are they dumping it? Uh, th there was just a bunch of barrels that got sold off, uh, sold into the market, it sounds like. And so everybody, you, you're, you're going to notice a lot of these, like, some of them are batched that are coming out, batched 10-year MGP, 36% uh, rye bourbon products. And some are coming out of single barrels from in, in, in NDPs all over the place. You're going to notice a lot of that hitting the market because all these barrels are floating around right now. I mean, that's what we were going to go pick from River Roots. And we we found a we found a pretty good barrel of that stuff, the 10-year, almost 11-year MGP bourbon. But then we tasted the rise and there's there's no going back. After you taste the rye that that we got from River Roots, it's like, yeah, that's that's incredible whiskey, not just rye whiskey. Okay. So this is going to be uh this is going to be interesting. Jesse says I'm really excited about all the higher aged MGP juice hitting the market. Who knows, maybe we'll find some gems in the same vein as the 2016 Old Scout single barrels. And I think so. I think again, like you know, Jesse given what we saw at River Roots the bourbons were, were all good. They were, none of them were like stellar in my opinion. And I think, I think we all knew it in the room, Ryan and Tom included, that they were very, very good barrels, but nothing stood out. But that's a small sample size of four barrels. Um, but looking at how the amount that's been hitting the market of those bourbons, and also when you, like, when we compared the four ryes, which again is a very small sample size, and you see like two out of those four ryes were crazy. One being just because of the proof and the color, and the other being the one we picked with the flavor profile. I think that combining those two ratios, like of the rye sample size and the bourbon sample size, I think across the board when you're talking about probably, you know, thousands of barrels, there are bound to be some really amazing barrels in the stuff that's going to be on the open market for people to buy. And that gives me a lot of hope that there will be some of those old scout esque single barrels. Toshi built out a couple more Ikea bookcases. And now I'm proud to say as of last week, no floor whiskey that dude, that's a, uh, everybody, cl everybody clap. That's a, an accomplishment to have no floor whiskey. <clears throat> All right, Marshall, in for uh, Super Chat here on Venmo. $35 Super Chat, seven entries. I got you in there, Marshall. Cheers. Thanks, man. Okay, here we go. It's time. We're caught up on Super Chats. Uh, Nancy Fraley said, that starting with Batch 280, Joseph Magnus will be a base 10-year MGP. And it makes sense. I bet they bought a bunch of those barrels mixed with 16 and 20 year. So I, I look forward to that. I look forward to that. Okay, here we go. We're going to start by reviewing Heaven Hill 18, and then we'll compare it to the 17, and then we're going to get into the weeds. Hit that like button if you haven't already. Uh, please, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, whether you're watching live or watching the replay, uh, it would be great if you would consider subscribing. Check out the Patreon as well. Um, five or ten dollars a month at this point. Now, Heaven Hill 18 year dropping in the last week or two, 120 proof even on this, which is 60% ABV. It is 18 years old only. So on the front label, all what I be, I believe this is 133 barrels. All 133 barrels came from warehouse one I on the third floor. They all have the exact same production date of December 27th, 2005. It is the standard mash bill, Elijah Craig mash bill, 78 corn, 10 rye, 12 malted barley. 
and again, all 18 years old at 120 proof even. The rumor is, the rumor, I, I, it's not really a rumor, Vine Pair reported this. I don't know how reliable that source is. I, I'm not uh, too familiar, but I know I, I read on the Vine Pair, it may have been a review or a preview article, that this blend, this blend of Heaven Hill 18 supposedly was about 150 proof at cask strength. And they watered it down from somewhere around 150 to 120. So that's pretty significant if that's true. But, and that's what they said they were told uh, uh, from the master distiller at Heaven Hill. Now looking at Heaven Hill 17, this is 118.2 proof. So 1.8 proof lower. And most of Heaven Hill 17 on this front label actually says that, you know, most of it's made up of 19 and 20 year old whiskey. 17 is just the youngest and 28% of this blend is 17 years old. This comes from a bunch of different Rick House sites. So it it looks like a little more of a curated blend, right? Than just saying, okay, we're going to pull all these barrels off the same floor of the same Rick House. This one, much more all over the place. It feels more intentional in, in that way. Uh, let's talk quickly too about color. I know color doesn't tell everything. Color of the 18, color of the 17. Not sure if it comes through on camera. You can kind of see it there. The 18 is like a full shade lighter. Again, whatever the hell that means. A full shade lighter, the 18 is, than the 17. And now we, we're going to get into it. I hope these Ben Ewan glasses are good for this. I might have to change glasses if they're not. All right, 18 on the nose. All right. Let me smell the 17, though. All right. 18 is a is a light and airy profile, actually. And if, if you're a Patreon member, then you some of the things I say right now, I may be repeating myself. You know, it is what it is. But this this bottle, this Heaven Hill 18, I've had it open for two days now. It has changed a lot. I feel like I understand it a little bit better. But it's a really light and airy profile. Like, lots of crispy caramel notes to it. It also smells like a Cinnabon, which I know people are going to like that note. I like that note a lot. It smells like the inside of a Cinnabon, a little bit of a pecan pie note. But on this lighter, sweeter side, there's not a big, rich oak presence to this. Like, actually, it, there's really no trace of oak on this whiskey. Like, there's some darker notes, not a lot, but there there are some darker notes, but not not an uh, not an obvious oak note in your face. It feels uh it feels kind of young like there's a lot of grain on this product at 18 years old from Heaven Hill. That surprises me quite a bit. You can smell sweet corn. Again, not bad. Like it's like buttered yeah, buttered sweet corn type notes. Cinnabon, a little pecan pie. But the whiskey doesn't have a base to it. And, and there's a youth, there's a youthful, um, light, fluffy white cake menthol note that doesn't really make sense to me. Uh, so actually, you know what? Let me taste that first before I go to the 17. I, I, and I guess here's what I should say. This does not blow me away. Uh, it smells, it smells good. It's in some ways, classic Heaven Hill, but on the on the very lighter side of things. And when you think 18-year Heaven Hill in your head, this is totally not what you think. <laughs> I, I, I feel like I can speak for a lot of people when I say that. Because we all, like, we smell Elijah Craig. We smell Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Maybe you've had the chance to try 
a William Heaven Hill or something, or like a select stock of something that's 13, 14 years old, you have an idea of the trajectory of how it ages and what it smells and tastes like. Then you smell this and it makes no sense in that trajectory. If I smelled this, I would guess this is between 10 and 12 years old. Yeah, I would, I would guess 10 to 12 years old. So now let's taste it. It's so much better than when I first tried it. But it is it is better than when I first tried it. I will say that. Like when I, I cracked this for my Patreon. I don't I hate to, I hate saying that. I shouldn't say that. I cracked this for the drums and drams Patreon. I hate my the, 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 anyways, that's just a personal thing. I cracked this for the drums and drams Patreon. And it was so unimpressive that I thought something was wrong. Like with my palate, I just thought nothing made sense. It has gotten richer in in an interesting way. It feels stickier. Like the, the best thing I can think of is like really uh, rich. Like you break apart a candy bar and you see that caramel kind of like, you know, you break it, the caramel strings across. That's the visual I get when I drink this whiskey. And I also, again, I think of a Cinnabon. When I first tasted it, it just felt like young ass Heaven Hill whiskey. <laughs> and it didn't, it didn't impress me. It's better now. Uh, but like even at SRP, which is like 300 bucks, this, there's, this is just not $300 whiskey, I don't think. I don't get any fruit notes. So that means to me, it's kind of like a down the middle classic Kentucky profile without the oak, without the support. It gets more chocolatey for sure. A teeny bit of molasses on the back end. Uh, Eric, good call, man. Yeah, I meant to actually say that. It's even on the boxes too. The Heaven Hill font, just the top title font is different. The new 18 is this like sans serif thing. Looks like the font Impact, if you guys know that font. Well, it's got a little serif to it actually on the top, but it, it's got that Impact look, I guess. And then this is much more, I like the 17 box a little better. All right. So on to 17 now, Heaven Hill 17. Uh, Marty, do we know the mash bill? 78 corn, 10 rye, 12 barley. So it's like the standard rye, rye bourbon mash bill, like the Elijah Craig mash bill. Amy, I know, like, I know it sounds, I know it sounds good, but again, I, um, I think what's going to, got to find the words, you know, I think I'm going to gain a better understanding and be able to talk about it a little bit better when I compare to some of these Elijah Craig barrel proofs at similar proofs, um, you know, around that 120 proof point, different release years and stuff. I think that's going to help <clears throat> me kind of figure out what I'm thinking about it because I haven't done this yet. I've done the 17 and 18 comparison a few times on Patreon and just kind of with Sarah. Sarah, Sarah was like, get rid of the 18. <laughs> she was not digging it. So now let's go to the 17. Bourbon Bill says, uh, this sounds like trash compared to Heaven Hill 17. Thank you, dude. This is the thing. Okay. Bourbon Bill is nailing it. So for me, this is how I feel too. For the age, I want deep, dark, rich oak. A hundred percent. Unless you tell me, <laughs> you know, like unless you tell me the goal with this blend was to blend like a brighter, sweeter take on an 18 year whiskey. Then I go, okay, I'm not going to buy it. <laughs> Uh, and some people are going to prefer that profile. But I think after you set the precedent with Heaven Hill 17, then you go to this 18. And you know what we'll do? I, I forgot I pulled this sample. I have a sample of the Heaven Hill 20-year corn whiskey. We'll throw this in the mix. And that'll be interesting too. 
Brian, I unfortunately don't have the William Heaven Hill 17. Um, I think a sample's coming from uh, from Phil. I'm not sure if Phil's in the chat right now. He mentioned that he popped one open recently. Brian from Sealbox actually told me, Brian Bikey told me that the William Heaven Hill 17 is much better than the Heaven Hill 18. And I trust Brian's palette quite a bit. <clears throat> so, the, again, the 18 is not a bad whiskey. When I first opened it, I thought it was kind of not great. It has improved. But it just smells young to me. All right, now on to the, on to the 17. And the 17 is like... This is this is all molasses, all toasty, dark. I mean, I said I said kind of like a pecan pie thing, but but in a bright way on the 18, this is actual pecan pie filling in the 17. And a lot of cinnamon on the on the uh 17. Whereas the 18 is just is just kind of just bright oak spice. Heaven Hill 17 is so special. <laughs> I can't talk. Leather, funky oak, vanilla, that vanilla cream note that I love, dark chocolate syrup. Like that is a, this is a special, special whiskey, the 17 year. And the Ben Ewan glass is so good for it. The 18, let's go back to it. And yeah, it just smells, it smells like it's a 10 year whiskey. And it, it does taste good. Like it does taste good. That sweet corn note is so prevalent. All right, so here's what we'll do. Grab a few glasses. I'm gonna pour first. Excuse me. The uh, the Heaven Hill corn, the 20 year corn whiskey. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Joe says Heaven Hill 17 is one of my five favorite bourbons I've ever had. Yeah, I think it's up there. I think it's really up there. All right, so. The twenty-year corn whiskey, which in a blind, I thought this was I thought this was Henry McKenna, which goes to show for me that I that this corn whiskey feels half its age. It feels like a ten-year product. Yeah, I I totally stand by that. And then so going from the twenty-year corn now to Heaven Hill eighteen. Okay. And this is what I said to the, the the Patreon also, I think, yesterday or the day before. Heaven Hill 18 is closer to the 20-year corn whiskey than it is the Heaven Hill 17. So if, the, if there was a middle ground between the incredible profile of the 17 and the 20-year corn whiskey, which has totally plummeted on secondary, people don't really, you know, <clears throat> they're not seeking that out. If there's a middle ground between them, that's what Heaven Hill 18 is. So my my advice my advice would be this. If you if you have the chance to buy a Heaven Hill 18 at SRP, which is 300, and you're used to spending that kind of money on bottles once, twice a month or something, like if you really, you know, you put a lot of money into your collection and you find it at SRP, the collector in you, you know, should buy this bottle. It's a it's a good whiskey. You're going to enjoy drinking it. And it'll be fun for you to put it next to other things and compare. And I think it'll also be fun for you to blind your friends with. There's a, It'll serve a lot of purposes for you, even beyond just drinking it. 
But if you're looking at it on secondary, and it's about $1,300 right now on secondary, and that's what I paid for this bottle. So I feel I feel the full effects right now of buyer's remorse for this bottle. I I would absolutely say do not pay secondary for this bottle. Get a sample first and try it and <clears throat> see if it's up your alley. But if you're going to pay secondary, buy the Heaven Hill 17. Again, if you find this at SRP, if you wait at the distillery, you have the chance to buy it. It's not going to blow your budget for the next two months. Don't do that on this bottle. But if it's like, hey, I'm going to buy this and then I'll wait till the next payday two weeks later and buy my next bottle of whatever, buy it. Yeah, at SRP. Jesse, uh, how many? <laughs> I have no idea how many Jack Daniels toasted pecans the Heaven Hill 18 could get. Too many. <laughs> Be really. This just in. Cam has changed the giveaway to 20 samples of Heaven Hill 18. No. Um, this is the thing about the giveaway, too. I think what's going to. For the people that win the giveaway tonight. I think it will be so interesting for them to compare the 18 and the 17 because I actually think there are folks out there that are going to like the 18 more because they're not going to like the tannins and the heavy oak influence of the 17. It's really not super tannic, but it it's in there for sure. And the heavy oak that a lot of people are going to, you know, some people don't like oak in their whiskey. Fred Minnick even talks about that. He doesn't like a lot of oak. So I, I think some people will like the 18 more, but I think either way, the comparison is what's going to be fun about about tasting both of these. And then, again, if you have any Elijah Craig's like we're going to get into now in, in a second, to put them next to, that will also be a fun experience. Because I think some folks are going to find Elijah Craig barrel proofs that they probably like more than the Heaven Hill 18. And maybe, I mean, hell, maybe even the 17. I think that's less of a chance, but maybe. <clears throat> bourbon bill with the with the freaking truth bomb if you don't like oak don't buy aged bourbons <laughs> yeah that's like uh enough said uh we got two more super chats here on venmo we got one from william snyder thank you will uh william got you in for one and let's see, we got one more in the Venmo. Make sure yep, we're good there. Okay, let's see. From Joseph uh, Ezernak, Joseph E. And let me pull that up. Sorry, taking a little too much time here for this. Joseph. Neck. In for one $5 super chat. Thank you, Joseph. Super chat, like your channel. Here's to increasing success. Thank you. Appreciate that. And Noah is jumping in for two entries. And he says, Heaven Hill 17 is probably my favorite bottle in my collection. The only other bottle that compares and actually tastes similar is the Pirate Bottle Batch 12, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Yeah, I, I could see the comparison uh, between those two. Thanks, ma'am. Thanks for the super chat. <clears throat> Sparty on bourbon says late to the show. Cheers all. Go green. All right. Got you in for one, man. Thank you. All right. So here's what I pulled for Elijah Craig barrel proof comparisons for this Heaven Hill 18. I pulled uh, C921 because there's a 12 year age statement and this is 120.2 proof. So it's 0.2 away from the Heaven Hill 18. So let's pour some of that. And then I have two more. I have C923 because of the age statement. The problem with C923 is that it's 133 proof. It's not really a problem, but <laughs> it's, it's a tough comparison when it's 13 proof points higher. So we'll wait on that one. But the other one I pulled is A124. This is 10 years, 9 months. I think it's terrible whiskey. Uh, I do not like it. I think it's bitter. 
uh, astringent young. Which is really weird, but 119 proof, that's going to be a good comparison. So we're going to scoot this over. And I've got Heaven Hill 18 here. And this is C921 at 120.2 proof. So 18. Okay, now C921. All right, we got to coat this glass. <clears throat> uh, Eric says, C921 was my first Elijah Craig Barrel Proof experience. That's a pretty good, I mean, it's a middle-of-the-road modern batch is the way I would put it. From 2021 to 2024, it's like firmly in the middle, and it's representative of the modern ECBP profile. It's not special, and it's not bad. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Jason, you know that I'm drinking the A23 micro batch. <laughs> you, know, you know which one I'm drinking. Uh, okay. C921. Let's take a sip of this. That's super solid. Man, that's very good. Chocolate covered cherry is like a little bit of a little bit of peanut butter. Great oak, great leather down the middle. Clean modern Elijah Craig barrel proof profile. No no real funk on that batch. Okay. Now to Heaven Hill 18. Right. So, uh, the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, same same proof, six years younger, same mash bill. The Elijah Craig is way more aggressive, and it's the same proof. It's just like, it doesn't smell young. It doesn't, it actually doesn't really smell younger. It just smells more in your face. And then the Heaven Hill 18 is like, <laughs> you guys ever see the memes online of like the pondering your orb? You know what I'm talking about? It's like the wizard and the <laughs> with his orb and the beard. It's like a meme. See him on Instagram. And uh, if Heaven Hill 18, sorry, if Elijah Craig C921 is like just a normal, like, like a child. Heaven Hill 18 is like the wizard with the orb. You know, it's like the it's like the elder uh the elder statesman version where it just smells round, underproof. It smells relaxed, not necessarily in a great way, but it is Yeah, so it it does smell more sophisticated. It's it's kind of to me like a scotch. It feels it feels sophisticated, the 18, compared to the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. But I think a lot of people are going to smell the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof and they're going to think, well, that has more flavor. It smells like a higher proof. And they're going to sip it. And it hits your palate so much harder that they actually might prefer that over the Heaven Hill on a blind. The palate of the Heaven Hill hits harder than the nose for sure. Okay, I gotta zoom out. There we go. <clears throat> um, let's see. Devin with the super chat. Thanks, Devin. And thanks, man, for the freaking awesome sample. And for two, I gotcha. And let's see. After you said you spent your budget intended for Heaven Hill 18 uh, on that old Forster employee bottle, you should have listened to the universe. How this, how this <laughs> less than 1% helps, hope this less than 1% helps ease the pain. <laughs> Thanks, man. Oh, God. Yeah, Sarah liked the, the old Forster employee bottle better. Actually, better than Heaven Hill 17, which I think she's crazy, but she has a real special connection to that employee bottle. All right. <clears throat> so I actually think between C921, which is just an average batch, 
and Heaven Hill 18, it's going to come down to your personal preference. Now, A124, again, I think is a hot mess. Let's see how this compares to the Heaven Hill 18. Whew, that bitterness, man. Okay. Unfortunately, there's like a there's a connection here on the profiles between the A124 at 10 years, 9 months. It has a similar kind of profile to the 18, but the 18 is obviously sweeter, rounder, richer. But there is a connection here. They they actually feel almost like the same age in a lot of ways. All right. So, I, I mean, look, I think this is enough comparing these Elijah Craig's. <clears throat> For me, the moral of the story is that the Heaven Hill 18 is a good bourbon. It is not a $300 bourbon. It is not worth secondary. If you find it at SRP, it's in your budget. You're a collector. Buy it. That's fine. You're, you're going to like it. You might not love it. But if it is up your alley and you want a little more of a relaxed, kind of brighter, airy version of an 18-year Heaven Hill product, then fine. For me, I'm very sad I spent $1,300 on this bottle. And I hope that more, I, I hope I can share this bottle with people and kind of take the temperature of the room and see what people think of this. And if I'm crazy, especially compared to the Heaven Hill 17, I'll, I'll love to hear people's thoughts on this. <clears throat> What's up, Clay? Uh, Jesse, the same A124 you said was hot garbage. Yeah. The, the A124, though, like, is hot garbage for me because it has this weird, astringent, bitter thing. Yeah. Ooh. It's 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 almost a little rubbery tint. The Heaven Hill 18 doesn't have that. The similarity is between the just the flavor notes in there, as far as the grain notes go, and how the caramel and... Yeah, kind of how the caramel, vanilla, and grain notes and that kind of white cake thing is similar between the two, but the 18 has more roundness, richness, you know, dark, a little darker hint of chocolate, hint of molasses in there. <clears throat> yeah, Jesse, this is, this is not a $300 product. that's going to, that's going to make you think existential thoughts. My existential thought is I just spent $1,300 on this bottle. Oh my, oh my God. <clears throat> Marshall, unfortunately I don't own Elijah Craig 18. I don't think I have a sample of it either. I had one at, at, at one point, but I've since then I've cataloged things and I don't think I not cataloged. Sorry. That would take a little while. I've just reorganized samples and I haven't seen an Elijah Craig 18 in a while. So Yeah, Bourbon Bill got hosed, man. A hundred percent. Bourbon Bill, we should do a live stream together, dude. Amy. Amy sent me an Elijah Craig 18. Yes, you did. You know, Amy, I think I drank it all. I, you know, I, I don't know. I'm always down to join live streams. Awesome, man. Well, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll figure it out on my end. I, I'm gonna, I, I don't think I have a live stream next week. I think I've con, I have a lot of conflicts coming up, so I got to figure things out. So, um, anyways, I'll be, I'll be in touch with you at some point and we'll figure that out. That'll be fun. Jason, found my first Rio today. That was kind of fun. Not necessarily my flavor profile, so I wasn't going to pay secondary for one. Yeah, that's a, you know, that's a divisive bottle. I I hate that stuff, but so many people love it. <clears throat> so I think finding one at SRP would be would be a cool, you know, cool experience. Uh, Wayne, I went by Heaven Hill last Saturday on my way home from Peerless and tried to pour the A124 upstairs and passed on the bottle. <clears throat> I went home uh, with a large A124 because it was solid for 60. 
yeah, I think if I had to choose between the two, I'd probably choose the larceny. I think you're right. <clears throat> Excuse me, Devin. Uh, I feel like the two of you would nerd out well together. That'd be a pretty interesting live. I think it would be fun. Yeah. All right, we are caught up. I love it. I love it. Bourbon Bill. People who like who love Rio will like having L eighteen. No oak and fruity. <laughs> Again, I you know I like I like the eighteen. If it was like if the Heaven Hill eighteen was like a hundred and fifty bucks, yeah, hundred and fifty bucks. The price is right for me. I would buy it. It because it's it's fun to explore. <laughs> the re this is gonna sound stupid. It's fun to explore as a as a whiskey because I feel like I'm missing something about it. The more I taste it, the more I'm like, I actually don't think I'm missing something. I think this is what it is. But because you have an expectation in your head of what Heaven Hill 18 should be, I set that up and now I taste it and I'm like, well, I must be missing something. So, so now I want to sit with it and taste it. But every time I do, I'm like, well, it marginally improved. <laughs> Oh man, what a question. What do you like better in terms of dark richness? Glendronic 18 or Heaven Hill 17? Glendronic 18, a hundred times out of a hundred. It's an easy one to answer, but what a great question. Because it's for for non-Scotch lovers, that probably doesn't make a lot of sense, but that that's a good question. <laughs> Thomas, uh, let's see. Uh, what other spirits do you sip on other than bourbons, whiskeys? So I don't know a lot about other spirits. The one that I think I would gravitate towards, gravitate, uh, yeah, towards the most, I have a shelf of Armagnac right here. There are some of these, uh, Her uh, what is it called? Maryland, <laughs> I'm, I'm spoonerizing things. I'm flipping them around. Maryland Heritage Series on the front of this shelf, the Sherbrooke, Sherwood, Mount Vernon, Laurelie. And then there's an Armagnac in the middle. And then the back row is all Armagnac of that. Armagnac for me is like my natural inclination. And then I also have tasted just a couple tequilas, like higher end tequilas. And I have really enjoyed those. So I would say Armagnac. And then I don't know anything about tequila, but I know that I've had good ones and I really enjoy those. Gin is not really my thing. Vodka, no. Uh, what else? I had a I had a bottle of twenty five year Calvados and I hated it. I thought it was disgusting. So that's that's kind of <laughs> I think that's just not my my profile. What am I missing? I mean, yeah, Scotch would be included in bourbon whiskey. So uh, if Heaven Hill seventeen didn't exist, would God? That's a great question. Would you like Heaven Hill 18 more? It's easy. I mean, it's easy to say no. I think I'd be more forgiving. But I think they shot themselves in the foot. This is my biggest question with Heaven Hill 18. Is the fact that they pulled... that? Uh, let me... I need to have an alert. Speculation alert. My thought when I look at the label and you see that all the barrels came from the same floor of the same Rick house, and then you look at the 17 label and you see that the barrels come from all over, all different ages. To me, it feels like, okay, we're going to release this heritage collection and we need to have a badass first release to kick it off. This is so typical of brands and it makes sense from a marketing perspective. So they curate this amazing blend with a 17. They do the 20 year corn whiskey, which is so random. And whatever incentive they had to do that, you know, is fine. Whether it's financial, you got to get rid of the barrels. Maybe it's that they wanted to immediately show some different, like major differences in what they could release under this umbrella so that we don't have a lot of expectation moving forward. And it gives them leeway to put weird things in the series. Like, I don't know. I don't know what the motivation was. Then you go to the 18 and it's all from the same place, same age. It just feels like a spreadsheet thing. I don't feel when I when I have this 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 eight team, I 
am not inclined to believe that this was about the terroir of the Rick House and the floor that it was on because they've never discussed it as such. If they told me, like they, like Jim Beam told us about the Frankfurt boss and Claremont, that you're supposed to taste the profile of the Rick House and the floor that it's aged on, all from the same production date, that's a great selling point, actually. But they didn't do that. So to me, it feels a little bit more like they probably looked at their spreadsheet of barrels and all their insane amounts of Rick Houses, and they said, well, we got a lot of 18-year product on this floor of this Rick House. Let's just bottle it all together, you know? And that that's what it feels like. It feels like just a a blend that was thrown together with less care than the 17, which feels like it was very carefully put together. And also look at the look at the proof of the 17 year. 118.2. That's a little more specific. And then you look at this and it's 120 on the dot. It just it feels like God, I hate to personify the whiskey this much, but it feels it feels like a more impersonal bottle from Heaven Hill. Whereas the 17 feels very taken care of. Oh, Jesse, great call. I have never had a high-end Mezcal, but I love Mezcal. Dude, if you have high-end Mezcal, that's very cool. I'm, I don't know anything about it besides the fact that when I order tequila cocktails, I just always ask them to substitute Mezcal. <laughs> Wayne Arnold says, I hated scotch, but thanks to Leo, I was able to enjoy the Glen Alkey 21 year tonight. Wow, a 21 Glen Alkey. I've never had that. That is cool. Uh, I think I might like scotch now. <laughs> yeah, that'll, that'll probably do it. Bourbon Bill, I had to get rid of the old crap that didn't taste old, which is what people who buy high age whiskey want. It also wouldn't make the cut. All right, so talking kind of like from a heaven hill perspective had to get rid of the old crap that didn't taste old which is what people who buy high age whiskey want it also wouldn't make the cut for their other uh, other william heaven hill su uh surprise they didn't water it down more yeah maybe if they watered it down more it would be better i don't know it's not terrible whiskey it's not bad whiskey but it's not great whiskey and I guess, yeah, I guess they could have made Elijah Craig 18 out of this. You know, why? I'm going to I'm gonna water it down a bit. Let's see what happens. Okay. Let's see what happens with that. I'd say it's 90 proof or maybe even lower than 90 proof. It does better at a lower proof, actually. I think I think the 120, maybe 120 is a weird proof for this. Maybe it should have either been like 135 or like 90, you know? Because 120 felt, it just, it's in this in-between. Right now at this lower proof, it smells sweeter and like what you would expect... I could understand that this would be 18 years old at this proof, whereas at 120, it feels much younger. I don't know. Clay says, since you don't don't like the bottle, add some water to the actual bottle and come, eh, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> The, the financial investment part of me with this bottle says I'm not going to do that. Yeah, who knows? Who knows what the motivations were? But at the end of the day, Heaven Hill 17, which the, the color difference is pretty hilarious too. Heaven Hill 17 is so crazy good. And... If I had to make a prediction, again, speculation alert, my prediction would be that as more people review the 18 year, I think a lot of folks are going to say similar things to what I said about this. I think uh, I've noticed that many people have gotten samples of the 18 and some people have gotten full bottles of the 18. I think that Again, I don't want to, I'm not calling people out, 
but you are less incentivized to be honest when you get an entire bottle of Heaven Hill 18 sent to you for free. A lot of people don't like to bite the hand that feeds. It depends on your motivation with your channel, whether it's a pure money-making venture or, or not. But I do think eventually there will be more negative reviews than positive reviews of 18, and I think this on secondary is probably going to go up the 17 if that happens. Like what I'm saying to you tonight, we have less than 7,500 subs on the channel. This is not going to make a dent in what happens on the secondary market, I don't think. The Elijah Craig laser code thing was a totally different beast that took off. This is a live stream right now that I'm that we're talking about this. I don't think this is going to make an impact, but I do believe eventually the 17 will jump above the 18 on secondary in the same way that the old four, uh, excuse me, the old fits 17 is above the old fits 19 because so many people said the 19 was over oaked and secondary reflects that. Oh, Phil, dang cam, I was sold on not wanting the 17. Now the hunt is on. Oh, the seven. Unfortunately, the 17 is special. <clears throat> Cheese says, what about the old granddad? Well, the old granddad is in the giveaway tonight as, as a sample giveaway. Um, I, I, sh I should have one sip of that. We, we cracked it open last night. This is the second one of these I've had, this 1989. And the, the 89s, I can only speak to those. So good. But this one is different than the other one that I had. They were both 89s, both lot 18. This one is a little more... Well, we can talk about it when we get there. Jesse. Oh, man. I mean, I guess I've totally not ingratiated myself with Heaven Hill at this point. So, But I, I think I will probably still do a review video of the 18. Um... And I'll probably be like, yeah, you know, what what the heck's going on with this? This profile's so different. And I and once you have the 17 and you're looking forward to the 18, this is not a continuation of your expectations. It's like completely different. Clay, I so after I tasted this the first couple times, I watched Fred's video. And he called out the tobacco note on the Heaven Hill. Uh, he called the tobacco note only on the Heaven Hill 18. He was like, so he was so dialed into this tobacco note. I don't get tobacco, but I, I, I know what he was talking about because when I first cracked the bottle, I was like, what is going on? And there was I there was something in it that he, that I couldn't figure out. And I think he pegged that as tobacco and it made sense to me after going back and thinking through it once I watched his review. And he was not blown away by it. And when he said there's no oak on it, he is right. Fred nailed that. And most people would, would think he must be full of it because it's 18 year heaven. He'll, it's got to be so oaky. That's exactly what I thought. And then you taste the product and you're like, nope, that's not oaky. Okay. Here's what we'll do. Um, at 11.30 Eastern, which is in seven minutes. Let's see. Yeah, six and a half minutes. At 11.30 Eastern, we will shut off the giveaway. This is not me telling you to send more Super Chats. This is just giving you an expectation of when it's going to be over. <clears throat> because you guys have been so ridiculously generous with Super Chats tonight. And I have a few more to, to get to as well on the Venmo. I just want to set the expectation. 11.30, we'll shut it off. We'll do the giveaway. I kind of like the Heaven Hill 18 better at a lower proof. Devin says, just poured the ECBP A117. After Heaven Hill 17, there's definitely a similarity between the two. ECBP is a little more sweet. Yeah, a bit more edit. Yeah, definitely more ethanol in the A117, but closer than any ECBP I've tried before. Yeah, and I think it's it's that little dusty butterscotch thing in the A117 that relates to the, the Heaven Hill 17. 
Those are both just great bottles. Yeah, Bourbon Bill, I bite all hands. That's why I don't get media samples. Same, dude. <laughs> I get media samples. Like, the only ones I've been getting recently has been Still Austin, which is cool. I, I mean, and like you, dude, I I say what I think. I try to do it tactfully, and I'll, and I'll say this. Over the last couple years, I think I have improved. Like, I, I've really... I've really been shitty to some people uh, in the in in the industry. Like I've shit on small brands and operations, and I've been too speculative and said really shitty things. And it, when I look back on it, I really regret it. It makes me very sad and upset. And I don't want to get into specifics. This is like a, an open wound for me right now. I had a I had a conversation today that was hard, but. I try not to attack the people and I try not to say this is this is dog shit or whatever, but I do try to be honest in the most tactful way I can. Um, and if I am going to speculate, I try to be I try to be way careful with my words now. The whole 13th colony thing is interesting to me and I'm trying to find ways of talking about that. That's a tough one for me because I I can't wrap my head around it. But otherwise, I'm trying to, I'm doing my best with that. And you don't realize too, like even this, the channel's small, it's 7,500 subs just about. And even this, you, you don't realize the impact you have when you say things ab about stuff. So it's been a learning experience for me over the years. All that to say, I'm always honest. And so I had a lot of people sending me media samples before and nobody sends them anymore because you know, a lot of the folks that are looking to send those samples to small channels or small operations that aren't producing great products, and then you say a bad thing about them, and they see it, and they don't send you more. And I'm not upset about it. I'm, I'm used to spending the money now on this stuff, and the channel almost entirely supports itself at this point. So it is what it is. Okay. Let's grab uh, these last couple of Venmo Super Chats here. Oh, Jordan, uh, Jordan Lemke with a $66 super chat. Look at that. So what is that uh, entry-wise? 13 entries? Yeah, 13 entries for the $66 super chat from Jordan. Thank you, Jordan. Got you in for 13. That's a unique number. I appreciate it. Avery. All right, Avery. In for one. $5 super chat. Right, gotcha. And Avery says, looks like I missed most of the stream. I'm going to have to rewatch. Thanks, Cam, for the content. Thanks, man. And Jason Zell with a $50 super chat. Good Lord, guys. Thank you, Jason. I got gotcha you for 10 Uh Brian says, I... Brian says, uh, I definitely appreciate the honesty. It's got to be hard for reviewers not to be truly honest with making relationships <clears throat> with distilleries, but if not honest, then what's the point? It's such a fine line to walk, Brian, and I used to be way more just like scorched earth about everything. I can still get that way sometimes, I guess. But I, my efforts are are so much towards trying to be, just to say, this is my experience with this whiskey right now. And it doesn't reflect on these people. And and you don't know what the workings are behind the scenes. You don't know intent. You don't know anything. All you know is the product in the bottle. And to try to infer things beyond that can get dicey. Like even me tonight saying Heaven Hill 18 looks like a spreadsheet product where they went and found 133 barrels in a warehouse on one floor. And because they're not marketing it as a terroir driven expression, it just seems like they found these barrels and they decided to batch them. That's speculative, and I want to always now be clear about when I'm saying something like that and just say, well, here's an idea, but it doesn't mean it's true. And that also doesn't put into question, like, the people behind it. Heaven Hill's a giant business. It would make perfect sense for them to do that with those barrels because they're probably worrying about so many other things. 
it is it is a, a hard line to walk. And I've gone back and watched live streams and I've taken them down. I took down live streams today because I was like, I shouldn't have said that. That was insane for me to say what I said. Uh, Andrew Kelly, any more updates on Barrel? I have not heard anything, no. Anthony says, Cam, how much time do I have to find and trade this before you post your vid and incinerate it? <laughs> Anthony, I, truthfully, I don't think... I, I, can, I'm ha I mean, I'm not happy to be proven wrong about this. I don't think the channel is at a large enough point where it can affect the secondary market. Beyond the oddball instance of the Elijah Craig laser code stuff, which kind of boosted the C923 values a little bit. And that was not just me. Other people posted their own blind tastings of it. So that was kind of like a group thing, I think. I don't think it's going to affect it that much. But I don't know what I'm going to post it. It would be at least five to seven days from now. <laughs> so if you want to sell your bottle, sell your bottle. You know, that's funny. Jesse, it is a little easier to be negative towards the heritage distilleries than it is smaller operations for sure. And the other thing is this, uh, I want to say, just generally speaking, who am I? Who am I to say any of this? I don't have some formal training. Like, I'm just some dude that has been nerding out about whiskey for like three and a half years, basically. And it means nothing. And so it's one opinion in a sea of opinions now on, on YouTube. So don't, you know, don't take it as, don't put more stock in it than it deserves. Yeah, Clay, using terroir as a bourbon word is a rough, really rough way of pretty much just talking about production, uh, uh, production date off the still and, uh, you know, campus location and, and rickhouse floor location, I would say. But it's a really rough way. It has nothing to do with the grains themselves. Jason says, a little bummed to hear the initial reviews, but people are still going to hunt this bottle hard for sure. There are a lot of people out there, too, that they drink with their eyes and and uh, and that's it. So when they see Heaven Hill 18, they're going to love it. It doesn't matter what it tastes like. And I think a lot of enthusiasts... We'll drink this and be disappointed. That's just my, that's one opinion. Uh, all right. It's 1132. Super chats are cut off. Let me make sure there's nothing else that came in here. Okay. We got one more from Zach D. Zachary Dooley. In for one. Gotcha. Thank you, man. And I don't think we have any more PayPal. Okay. So let's get into it now. This is going to be, well, there's a lot of super chats, but I think we can do this in two, two rows. So let me share my screen with you guys. And while I do that, I'm going to have a little pour, I'm gonna clear this glass and pour a little bit of that old granddad that I'm going to put in the giveaway. All right, here we go. I'm going to share this window. Whiskey Uncensored. What's this drums and flannel stuff? <laughs> Just what I wear. I like wearing a flannel around the house. I don't know. Clay said, uh, that's why I always tell people to go into Armagnac, not expecting a whiskey. It's based on grapes, not grains. Yeah. All right. Look at that. And when I opened this old granddad yesterday, I mean, the cork is intact. The, the whiskey is completely clear. No sediment. It's a great example. Just a little, little thing in the one little piece in the bottom, and that's it. I think it's just a t teeny little cork chunk, but tastes great. Okay. 
So here we go. Here is the list. So the, uh, again, let me remind everybody how this works. Your name is on the left, your number of entries on the right. And so if you're Jacob and you submitted a $20 super chat divided by $5 per entry gives you four entries, then your name populates four times over here, right? And so on and so forth. And if you super chatted twice, which I don't know if we had any repeat offenders tonight, but if you super chatted twice, it would say Amy Bohm here, and then Amy Bohm would appear down here as well because it would be per time that you super chat. So check your name, and this is this is not everybody. This is from Jacob, right? This is from Jacob down to Dan Irving, and next we will do Dan Irving down to Zachary Dooley, which will be, yeah, it'll be fine. So check from, and we'll do it in two parts. Take about 60 seconds. Jacob Saliba down to Dan Irving. Check your name and your number of entries. And then we'll get down to the, the, the bottom half. And if there's any issues, please let me know. God, sorry. It's like I've never done this before. Please let me know in the chat if there are any issues. And we will get that corrected. And I'll take the banner off the screen now. Joe Dickinson says, you just need to get better at giving opinions versus making statements. A hundred percent, Joe. That is so, that's a great way of putting that, man. That's, and and I'm, I'm wrestling with that. I, I just want to make sure I'm so clear about the way that I communicate these things. And over the years, I've, I've gotten better, but I, I have a ways to go still about that. <clears throat> Josh says, did you see Michigan Liquor Commission lost a million dollars in bourbon? What? Oh, my headphones are freaking out right now. All right, we're going to take these out. <laughs> I hope that doesn't affect the stream. Sometimes if I take my AirPods out, things get funky. All right. Uh, Devin says, just sent Cam a link on Patreon. I always felt there was some shady business in Michigan. Oh, geez. I can't wait to read this. All right. Well, let's keep going now if there's no issues. Jacob uh, was down to Dan Irving, I believe. So now let's go from JG. I know JG only sent one, so we're going to keep going down. From Lance to Zachary Dooley, that should be the the end. Yeah, so there we go. Um, uh, I got to get this scroll right. Wow. Very insensitive. Or, or it's a little too sensitive here. Okay. Whatever. Lance, there we go. Lance with four entries at the top down to Zachary Dooley. That is the remainder, and JG got one. So, again, let me know if there's any issues with your entries. It feels so weird to not like when I have the I have my AirPods in and I have the background music playing I'm so used to having music in my ears when I'm live streaming that when I'm just sitting here by myself and I don't have the music in my ears it, it feels weird and naked what's up Mojo let me put these back in and see what happens all right there we go By the way, we had a ridiculous amount of entries tonight. So this is the most entries ever in a live stream for the channel. It is crazy. So thank you all so, so much. So right now I've got the old granddad, 1989 in the glass, the, the 114. And it is different than my previous bottle. 
This is a little more cherry cordial. It's it's all butterscotch, coffee, cherry cordial. With that, and it still does have that little grapefruit note that the the last bottle I had open had as well. But the, but the cherry cordial thing in here is more unique than the last one. All right. Well, let's do this. Let's do this giveaway now, and we'll stay on for a cut, just a few more minutes, and then we'll get off here. So random.org. Here's what I'll do. From Jacob, we're going to copy everybody's name. 230 entries. That is ridiculous. We have never had a number like that on the channel. So I have to say thank you to all of you. Here's what we're, here's what we're going to do. Um, we were going to do two. We're, we're going to do two sample packs. We're going to do three sample packs now of all of the giveaways. So three people are going to win tonight, not two. Again, 10, 10 one ounce samples. You, you guys know what it is. So we're going to have three winners tonight, not two. No double, no double winners. Okay, let's do it. So I got to put that back on the screen. Okay, so there you go. From Jacob, scroll all the way down to Zachary Dooley. Seven spins, top three win. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, and here we go. Seven. Jason Zell, Mike Conklin, and Jacob Saliba are the winners for this evening. Thank you, guys. Congratulations. This is going to be an awesome sample pack. I think you're really going to enjoy it. All right. Let me write this down so I don't forget. Giveaway sample pack. It's going to be Jason Zell. It's going to be Mike Conklin. And again, guys, just please email me. And uh, I think I have a... I might have all of your addresses. If not, two of the three. Jason, Mike, and Jacob. Email me. I'll put it right here. Drumsanddrams at gmail.com. Ah, oh, crap. Hang on. I missed the N. Drums and drams at gmail.com. There we go. Congratulations, guys. Put it on the screen, and we're back. Thank you. Everybody, thank you so freaking much. Um, I Yeah, the channel is... This is amazing. This is amazing. Phil says, almost paid for your Heaven Hill 18 mistake. Oh, God, that's funny. I'm going to share it. I'm going to share it with people, you know. We'll see what happens. All right. So anyways, this, this old granddad, 114. Drinks under... 114 it's so rich so what we did last night so i was hanging out with um was hanging out with some guys last night from work and we opened up this 1989 old granddad and we compared it to modern day old granddad and these are these are two guys that can appreciate whiskey and appreciate bourbon but they're not like they're not enthusiasts and collecting and all that and they were so blown away by what the difference was between this 89 and a current day old granddad 114. And they loved the 1989. And it it was reassuring to me because I'm like, all right, we're going to open this bottle, you know. And I'm hoping that they like it and they don't think like, oh, that tastes nasty like old books. No, they they loved it. Um, and so I love sharing Dusty's with people because I think it's so eye-opening with, with that kind of profile. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to wrap up with this Heaven Hill 17 because it's one of the most amazing bourbons of, I don't know, the last five to ten years, I guess. Of, of all the stuff I've tasted, 
Heaven Hill 17 is in the top 10 to 15, I would say. I have no idea exactly where it lands. It could be number three, but it's hard to say that, you know, after trying so many things, if you don't have them side by side, you really can't get a good estimation of where that could that could be. But I'd say top 10 to 15 easy all time for me, Heaven Hill 17. Oh, God. It's about as good as modern whiskey gets, you know? B Factor. Is there a laser coat on the Heaven Hill 17? Let's see. Let's start the conspiracy right now. Not on the bottom. Oh, but there is one up here. H0182 Hmm. No, I don't think any of that corresponds to like a bottling date. That's interesting. The plot thickens. I'm just kidding. But yeah, there's just a laser code like on the top here above the label. It's a nine digit code with a letter up front and then eight digits afterwards, eight numbers. Who knows? <clears throat> it's funny. Uh, Zach Dooley says, uh, so my C923 didn't have a laser code. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, this was a phenomenon for a lot of people that they didn't have laser codes. And I, some people tried to spin it like, oh, it's extra rare. No, I I just heard that it was a mistake, like on the bottling line, that it's inconsistent. The laser coding of these is inconsistent. I don't know if that's true. But the no laser code thing was a big phenomenon for a lot of people. So uh, who knows? <laughs> Jesse says fake. I love it. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know anything about it. I'm happy to put the laser code stuff behind me, although it was fun while it lasted. <laughs> and I stand by the fact that the A23 whatever batches, I think the later laser codes were better. I do think that. All right, guys, that's going to do it. I'm going to get out of here. Um, I would say the folks who won tonight, who was it? Uh, Jason, Mike, and Jacob. I would say expect to have your stuff shipped by Monday. Um, and it's a three-day shipping. So by the, well, we're not going to have a live stream next Thursday. Next Thursday, by the way. Oh, a few things for the 80 people left. Uh, I didn't put this out publicly. I put it out on Patreon. Uh, weekly Dram is done for now. We're going to move on from the Weekly Dram and just post videos on Mondays. That That's not the Weekly Dram. <clears throat> uh, on uh, this coming Thursday, I'm actually going to drive back up to Cleveland to River Roots and we're going, I'm going to help, I'm going to help Tom at River Roots bottle all of the Drums and Drams bottles for the barrel pick, which will be, I, I just wanted to get hands on and see what the process is like. And I'm then going to, I'm going to know yield, excuse me, at the end of that, which will be cool. So we'll know how many bottles we got out of that barrel by next Thursday. So no live stream next Thursday night. And I need a week off anyways, because I need to catch up on content after the getting that stomach bug. I'm behind and I, I need to catch up. <laughs> I had the best intentions and then I couldn't keep any food in my body. Jesse, if you want to come out, come out, dude. If, if you're, if you're free Thursday, we're starting at 10 AM. So that means I got to wake up early. I got to get up at like, I'll get up at like six 30. That's hard for me. I'm not a good morning person right now, but if you want to come out, shoot me a text and we'll talk. And then I can, I can hand off some samples to you as well that we talked about. That would be fun. They, they they mentioned that other people on the pick team can come. I just haven't reached out to everybody yet. So Joe, Joe, I mean, again, I'm not sure if you'd be available, but if anybody wants to come, it's Thursday at 10 a.m. Obviously, it's a work day, but if you're free, that would be cool. I'm not sure how many people they need or what the responsibilities of all of us will be, but either way, it'd be a freaking hang. Brian, what's up, dude? When are you in Louisville making videos with me, Brian? I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna be in Kentucky uh, two weeks from today, I think. 
I've got to work the details out with Toshi, but I'm going to meet up with Toshi in, in, well, probably in Bardstown, it sounds like. And I might stay down there like two days. So, dude, the weekend, sometime basically between the 4th and the 7th of April, I'm going to be down there for a few days. So if you if you want to make some stuff, and just, I mean, let's just hang out. We can make videos too. Let's do it. Let's do it. Oh, Clay, my oldest daughter made all district band on French horn. Proud. That's awesome, man. Brian, I, I need to try the egg salad sandwich. It's going to probably make me shit my pants, but that's okay. All right. Cheers, guys. What a great note to end on. Heaven Hill 17 in the glass. The better of the two, in my opinion. Cheers, and uh, I'll see you soon. I don't know when the next video is coming out. Just keep an eye on the channel. And if you want to have more regular updates, you can join the Patreon, five bucks a month. The price of a Frappuccino. All right, see you soon.